All right. Welcome, everybody. Hope you're all doing awesome. I'm super excited to be back. It's been a very long time. First of all, how are you all doing? Give me a shout in the chat if you're here. I see Taylor, Mohammed, Jaden. Saw Kyle earlier. Drop a, a like on the stream. Let me know you're here. Let me know volume and all of that is good. So it looks like all the levels and stuff on my side are fine. Yo, what up? Hopefully the stream delay is not too long. Just getting warmed up. Taylor, yeah, awesome. Jaden Fagun, hello, hello. I uh, got a little coffee here that's gone cold, unfortunately. I forgot to warm it up <laughs> before you started, but it was time to go, so here we are. Um, Daniel, welcome. Jamie, thanks. Yeah, I missed uh, doing this stuff. I took a bunch of time off recently in the last, like, Six weeks, I think I've worked. Uh, not that much, actually. It's been it's been good. I really needed to take some time off, though. Um, kind of catch up and assess where things were at. Obviously, there's been a, a lot that's happened in the last, uh, you know, month and a half or so. Um, hello from Egypt. Got two Mohammeds in chat. And uh, yeah, so actually, Taylor, it's funny you mentioned that. So there's a there's a bit of a mess over here, but I have a, something I'm gonna try with my videos, and that involves uh, basically rearranging this whole area. I'm gonna put a different piece of furniture there. I'm not gonna give it, give it away. And um, we're gonna see if I can try something different, at least not maybe not for every video, because of course streams, it won't really work, this idea that I have. Um, but I'm definitely going to try a new approach to some videos moving forward. Um, so yeah, there's no pro streamer background yet, but I got the I got the RGB, you know, orange, and there's purple over here, and I think there's like a blue right there. Martin, good morning, good morning. Um, yeah, Jaden, they're just basically LED light bulbs in my ceiling. Uh, no new mic. This is the same mic I've always had, but normally I have the mic like right here. I really don't like the mic's full frame in face, um, but I just decided I would like a little bit of better mic quality this time. Uh, it was a bit lacking before if I really analyzed it. So that's kind of what's going on. But yeah, hopefully all of you are doing well. Got people from all around the world. We got UK, Egypt, US and A, all that. So really excited to have everybody here. What I wanted to do today was just stream, connect, chat, see how everybody's doing, talk about current events, see where everybody's going. Autofocus, is it freaking out? I don't think I have autofocus on this camera. If it, if it is, it's, oh, I guess it's a little weird. Yeah, I guess so. Well, hello, glad, <laughs> I'm glad I finally popped back in at the right time. Uh, I'd really like to do some more um, some more content regularly. I'm gonna change things up. I was feeling all right. So so I'll be honest with everybody. I was feeling really um, kind of like struggling with motivation to be honest for for quite a while now. And um, so when I went to WordCamp Europe, it was amazing. You know, there was lots of Gutenberg talks and lots of really inspirational um, speakers. Lots of people who I didn't know that I would get as much value out of the talks as I actually did. So um, what ended up happening is I kind of came back and was trying to reassess where did I want to go? What do I want to do from here in terms of my agency focus, content on YouTube, courses, all that kind of stuff. And I'd been ruminating on that for a while, made a list of some of the stuff I wanted to do. And then of course the, the whole issue happened. I don't even want to talk about that. You guys know. And, um, and then so that, that changed things even more. So now I was more confused. And so, like I said, I, I wanted to take some time off to kind of step away and focus. Of course, I've done work in the meantime, but nothing crazy. And also, of course, been uh, away from YouTube and content production. But of course, the Oxygen course, I'm closing tomorrow. And um, I'm going to do a lot of changes to that website. I'm going to change my agency site. Um, I'm in uh, Kyle from the Admin Bars group. I'm in one of the table groups, and it's amazing. There's a lot of, um, a lot of value that comes out of that. A lot of stuff I've been talking about with that group. And then, of course, um, you guys will probably remember I launched my Xenon app earlier this year, back in February. That was uh, kind of a bust, to be honest. Um, but what we're doing is retooling that app. I'm going to make it work with Gutenberg, and that'll be our focus moving forward. So um, there's there's a lot of changes going on, a lot of stuff happening, not a whole lot visible on the front end, on the front end, you know, visibly out in the in the real world right now. But uh, that's kind of what's going on. Uh, let's see, ran off my YouTube subscription money with no stream. <laughs> You're right, Taylor, I, I hate that. Uh, but I do appreciate very much you being a uh, 
a member here on the channel. So if you're not already, the people who have uh, fancy colored names and the little thing next to them, uh, the little badge, that's because they're members here on YouTube. So you can click that little join button. Um, I'm gonna probably do some member content in the future, but that just helps support the channel. In the meantime, uh, go ahead and drop a like on that stream for me. That would be awesome. This website is not in Oxygen, no. This one I'll talk about in just a little bit. Uh, let's see. How many times we have our, oh, last name, first name. Our shot, okay, got it. Now I see, I'll, I'll try my best to decipher that. Very cool. Uh, yeah, Taylor, Elementor all the way, baby. Okay. Uh, let's see, so where are we at now? Six minutes, so hopefully the uh, YouTube notifications have been pushed out and people will continue popping in. Um, we can move over here in just a little bit, but r r before we get started, I'm curious uh, with everything that's gone on, you know, where where are you at? What are you doing? What what builder are you focusing on? Where, where are you gonna take your business? Are you changing things up? Everything stayed the same? Give me a little a uh, little drop in chat on what you guys are planning to do. Because for me, so much has changed and will continue to change, which is exciting. I think I've been doing this business kind of the same way for about five years now. I started officially what is this business now in 2017. And, um, you know, things have been good. I've focused on oxygen that entire time and it's time to change it up. So I'm really excited about that. Let's see, I'm getting a warning about bit rate and quality and stuff. I think it's okay. There we go. Let's see. Heinrich, keep using oxygen and bricks. Nice. Taylor's been sleeping. Yeah, dude, I hope you feel better soon. And Jamie says, I'll keep using oxygen for now. Loving bricks. Bricks, bricks. Holy shit. Oxygen, bricks, pine grow, and Gutenberg. Yeah, very interesting, Daniel. I've uh, explored pine grow a little bit, just kind of researched it without actually using it. It's very intriguing, but not sure that's the direction I want to go. Um, the other thing I failed to mention is uh, Taylor, actually, Taylor Drayson spent some time with me probably like six weeks ago, and uh, we were covering kind of what the um, the ACF blocks route can do along with, uh, Taylor, what's that thing called? The, um, oh gosh, uh, the, the block software you walked me through that one day, I forget, that, that was really cool. Blue, uh, block Studio, yes, that's it, Block Studio. That was really cool because the ACF blocks are pretty intriguing. That's something that I definitely want to spend more time learning about is um, how to incorporate custom blocks. And that's going to be a big focus of Xenon is the idea is that we'll hopefully get it to a point where it can export Gutenberg blocks straight from Figma. So we'll see about that. Uh, switch from O2 to bricks. Well, I mean, that's crazy. Pretty much everybody says bricks with a few exceptions. Jaden's going back to Wix. <laughs> I know that's a joke. <laughs> Sam says Webflow, very interesting, Sam. Yeah, I, um, I've, I've seen your recent videos and Webflow is intriguing. I'm, I'm kind of, I talked to uh, Dave Foy a good bit and as you probably know, he had a, uh, a series where he was, um, he well, not a series, but he moved his business and kind of his course content over to Webflow and in the last you know six months or so has come back for a number of reasons. So Sam, I'm curious to see uh, what your experience is like, especially as it relates to client work. Michael is uh, still struggling to like Gutenberg. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because um, I kind of felt the same way. I was I was trudging through Gutenberg, but there's a, a few kind of like key advantages, which is that, um, or excuse me, the things that I was looking to get out of it was I wanted something that's lightning fast on the front end, you know, page load speed. I wanted something that doesn't require much tweaking in terms of getting that performance out of it. And then you really have to think, I mean, Taylor just said it in chat right now with Gutenberg, it takes you back to the basics. You have to stop over complicating. You don't have a lot of the things that oxygen would have, which initially seems like a hindrance and you think, oh, I wanna be able to do this and that. But what it actually does is make your designs easier and but still very effective. Um, the other thing I wanted was something that was super easy for clients to edit and Oxygen just wasn't that. I mean, I had to build, just like you probably had to build custom ACF uh, fields and that kind of thing, which is fine, but then you have this sort of like dissonance between the back end and the front end, whereas Gutenberg alleviates a little bit of that. So I'm still, I'm still very much in the exploration phase right now, uh, but I do think this is the approach moving forward. Let's see, Zion, let's, Webflow is for a different kind of need. 
Okay, interesting. So if you can pick Webflow, you go that route. Interesting. Very, very intriguing perspective. I feel Oxygen will only be beneficial for advanced conditions and custom sites like job listings compared to brochure sites and landing pages. Exactly, Taylor. So that's actually another thing that I was really considering is I want to kind of take my business in a new direction. So a lot of the Oxygen stuff that I would get in terms of client work was custom sites and things with these heavy customizations and conditions and that kind of thing, which is really cool. But, um, you know, it's extremely time consuming. It, it uh, of course, the, the project size in terms of dollar value was much higher, but I don't really feel that it was that much more profitable. I don't think the extra headache and complexity that comes with it translates to, you know, necessarily a better profit margin. So I'm looking at transitioning my business to kind of the monthly site approach. So, you know, you have a kind of a contract term of maybe 24 months um, and you have a, a monthly payment essentially. So you don't have some large upfront sum and that's going to take a little bit of, of finessing on my side because, of course, you still need cash flow to survive and pay the bills and all that kind of stuff. But for me, the other big thing amongst all the other things that I wanted, like I already mentioned, is better recurring revenue, just better, better monthly recurring. And um, that is definitely a priority for me. I'm not sure exactly how to achieve that, but um, that that is one thing. So. You may have gotten my email about creating a custom, uh, not a custom, my email about creating a, a premium community, and that's still potentially on the table, and I feel like that's the correct direction, so not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, Jaden, down to chat with it. Taylor, the website on a day thing is super intriguing. I was subscribed to an email list for a while that was kind of teaching you how to do it, and the, the woman who was instructing it, she had that down pat. Um, that was really intriguing, and I also watched Kyle's uh, live stream was it a live stream? I think it was. The webinar with um, Hans from Termageddon. And that was super, super interesting. So uh, I haven't done that yet. I haven't done that yet. Do you export your Webflow sites? Not a question for me. Uh, Michael, do you offer full service digital marketing for your customers? I used to. We used to offer everything under the sun. And then once I started really heavily focusing on oxygen, we just became an oxygen agency and that's it. But what I would like to do, because I love SEO is get back into that for client work and maybe some trainings and stuff. But um, the SEO for like local client sites was so much fun. It was honestly relatively easy. It was profitable and clients loved it. You know, when they Google their search term and they're number one and you're the one that did that, they're just so ecstatic. And that's a really rewarding experience. Uh, yeah, Jaden, you're right. It does need a, it does need a serious process because otherwise it just, it, it won't work. I mean, I think Arshad is touching on that right now. Only a myth, more things to do. Exactly. Yeah, so much to do. I think maybe you could do a website in a week. I think that's a realistic kind of uh, time frame for something like that. Real quick, I know we got quite a few people in the stream right now. And uh, if you guys can drop a like on the stream for me, you hear YouTubers say that it's annoying. I know, but it really does help. The likes and watch time are a big factor in the, uh, the you know, retention, and that kind of thing. So uh, let's see what I wrote down a bunch of stuff over here because I wanted to talk about a bunch of different things. So the monthly sites, yeah, I already said monthly recurring, easier client editability, faster, and then uh, finding a niche too. That's another thing is my niche 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 for a long time was just we are an oxygen agency. I am the oxygen, you know, kind of go to person. And um, that was the angle. But of course, as you know, I'm going to be kind of exploring other things. And uh, so it makes sense for me to kind of find a new niche. If I look at something I'm super passionate about, it's kind of cars and racing. But is there a market for that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Webflow is generally the best option. It has limitations, but not that many that impact client. Essentially, a custom post types built in. Jack smiles. I've been looking to focus on SEO and automation. Completely stuck on how to turn the expertise into a product. Yeah, Jack, you know, I have actually. I've, I've definitely considered it because it's it's all about kind of those sales conversations. You, For, for me, I felt like the, the processes are important, of course, but they're very repeatable. It's generally the same things. Exploration phase, then you're going into kind of the technical review, proposal, you know, the implementation, and then that sort of ongoing management for sure. Uh, I'm happy to have you, Jack. Thanks for joining. Taylor, the F1 site is crazy. I've, I've actually considered it before, but there's a lot going on in that site. So much data. I've thought about doing that. The only thing that I wouldn't 
be stoked on is having to input all that content. So like the posts and all that kind of stuff. But there's some cool like border effects and their their menu is pretty sweet. Uh, although sometimes I do find that F1 site kind of hard to explore a little bit. I love their calendar thing though. The calendar is so sick. And we got the summer break going on right now for F1. Hopefully we'll be back sooner than we know it. Hello, good to see so much, so many people joining now. Andre, good to see you too. John, welcome back. Thank you so much. Glad to have all you guys. 42 concurrent viewers. Let's go. The number is climbing. Oh, I know you can't see anything. I wasn't, I wasn't showing anything on stream. I just was looking at it myself and talking out loud. I think instead of doing the warm-ups where there's just a blank title screen, I like talking and chatting with everybody. Um, the other thing that I was <laughs> you know, there's like, there's full tons of YouTube channels with like react content. I thought about, uh, doing streams where we're like watching other, uh, other WordPress people's content, but, um, maybe like a, like a YouTube, uh, WordPress reactor. Michael says, never talk about my tech stuff with customers. Did you find saying oxygen agency actually helped? Uh, yes, it did. Because most people that I was, um, was talking to in terms of client work, were coming to me because they found a piece of content of mine somewhere across the internet. So they knew who I was and they were already looking for oxygen. So they, they knew about oxygen. So that was an important part of the conversation. To be honest, I watched all your videos and you were so much of oxygen. That's actually not true. You said um, only since the whole breakdance for drama. No, I think oxygen has never really been great for clients. It, it was great if you built the the kind of framework for it to be, but it was so heavily customized it took a massive amount of time with ACF fields and you know any custom code solutions. So it was good because you could do that, but was it really a viable thing for them long term? No, I don't think so. It's good to hear Oxygen's border lag has been <laughs> fixed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. Cool. I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, Shibu Pandit, I'm doing well. Hopefully you are too. I appreciate all you guys that dropped a like on the stream. I already see it's up to nearly 20, so that's amazing. So um, what I'm going to be working on today is essentially just a build stream. And uh, oh, this is crazy. Chrome has a little preview when you hover over tabs. Now let me switch over here. Let's go to, is it this one? Doodly -doo 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 -doo. Where am I? There we are. Uh, let me move myself down over here out of the way. Um, what I was just saying is there's a little Chrome preview now, whenever you hover over this, look at that. That's crazy. Pretty cool. Oh, you can't see it because of the way my browser is configured <laughs> for OBS. Whoopsie. Oh, well. Um, so this is a Figma design for a client that I'm going to be building today. So we're just going to be chatting, kind of going slow and I've made uh, a good, good chunk of progress on this homepage and, uh, I want to just keep going. So this is not really like a necessarily um, you know, anything other than just hanging out, chatting, building, seeing where we go. So what I've done so far is this site is generate press and generate blocks. Of course, there are definitely things for me still to address. There are uh, some some differences and kind of uh, you know formatting things that need to be changed, but. This is kind of where we're at so far. I need to get a better light box gallery situation going here. Um, so there are some things that we're just gonna have to kind of tweak and, and adjust and see where we can go. Um, this is WP Social Ninja from the Fluent Forms team. So that's what this is right here. And it's funny because this nearly perfectly lined up with the Figma design. And this is something that I felt like would be really cool because um, I think that building a custom post type for testimonials is okay. But realistically, nobody keeps up with that. I mean, it's going to just go stale uh, very quickly. And so this is going to pull in, of course, their Google reviews and their um, their page speed. Yeah, exactly. Tailor that. I think there's an image lightbox tutorial that you had from before that would work. So I probably will take a look at that. Because this doesn't need to do much. It just needs to be a gallery, essentially. So plugin killed page speed? I don't think so. I haven't looked super closely yet, but I mean, the thing about generate press and generate blocks is it's screaming fast just in general. So I would hope that it won't make that big of an impact. Uh, yeah, so there's still plenty more. So we have to, you can kind of take a look at this. There are some design things that I need to adjust. Uh, looks like there's a little pattern back there that I just now noticed behind the testimonial section. And then uh, I need to figure out the footer situation. So 
this is uh, like right now it's full width and I think left align. So we'll need to do that. And I need to figure out how to create this like sub footer in generate press. So I'm not exactly sure, but that's what we're going to be exploring today. So this particular site is uh, one that the client edits very frequently. So my decision to go with generate press and Gutenberg blocks is essentially that they can come in and edit anything, but it, I also have the ability in generate blocks, generate press, I'd get the two of them confused. They're, they're one and the same in my mind, um, to have global styles. So these sorts of buttons, these headlines and that kind of thing, you have a global style component to them, kind of like a class in Oxygen, sort of like a different approach to that that doesn't require naming classes and you know that kind of thing. Um, but if you haven't seen it, I'll, I can show you that if you're interested. Uh, yeah, I see your, your point there about clients wrecking the site. I wouldn't have a client editing the live site. I mean, well, I don't know. I guess that's not true. I guess they would sometimes edit the live site. But yeah, I think, it, I think it's six of one, half a dozen the other. Yeah, so the, uh, the generate press um, global styles, is it actually generate blocks? Yeah, it is, okay. So um, the Generate Blocks Global Styles is super interesting. Also, I forgot to mention, uh, somebody asked me, I think it was Sridhar, he said, why do you not develop on local? And I was like, uh, I don't really know. I just don't do it. So I started doing it and it's of course great. The only thing that I noticed was, well, I've been out of town, I was working on my laptop on some local sites and I needed to move them to my computer. And of course you can export them and import them pretty easily. But that was one thing that's nice about developing on a you know web server was that you know I could just pick up where I left off with no interruption, except that uh, you know if you don't have an internet connection, then that's not great. Uh, you're right, Taylor, you did definitely tell me that while I was with you, you definitely did tell me that. Um, so back to what I was saying, the, uh, the Generate Blocks Global Styles is really interesting because you can create a global styles kind of post, essentially, is what this is. You don't actually have to separate them between headings and buttons and that kind of thing, but that's what I did. Uh, Kyle from the Admin Bar uh, spent like an hour one day with me kind of walking through this, which was super helpful. And essentially, the global styles allow you to create, excuse me, create these usable elements, reusable elements, and what happens is... In my case, I just separated them out between headings and buttons so that you can kind of get a sense for how this works. So this, this is funny, I told you, Kyle helped me with this. So what you do is you create the element. Over here on the right-hand side, you can give it uh, a global style name and a label for the front end. In this case, because we're working with, oh, I need to move this over just a little bit so we don't overlap the builder. Um, in this case, of course, since we're working with a heading, we can give it the correct semantic HTML and then you give it the styling and all that kind of stuff. And I created all my different options just like I would have done in Oxygen. So I have H3, I have H3 white, which you can't actually see, and then H5 and so on. Then um, when I create all the styles and then when I'm actually working on the page, what you can do is you have your heading, you select that and there's a use global style. So there is all the styles from my global settings that I just worked with and it's extremely easy. It's just like Oxygen where if you make the change to one of the global styles anywhere that applies, unless you have something that overrides it you know, over here, then, um, then all those changes will be updated. So that's something that I love from Oxygen, of course, and just you know, web design in general. So that class structure is sort of classes, but not quite. It's definitely the same idea. You achieve the same thing uh, and you can still override whatever you need to, just as though you were adding an inline style or affecting the ID of the element in Oxygen. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, uh, there are definitely cases where the ACF stuff still totally makes sense, where a purely ACF layout makes sense. But for the kind of clients that I want to move towards in the monthly sites, that is not going to make sense for me. Changing text, editing contents. I mean, exactly. That's, look at how easy this stuff is. That's the thing that I've realized about Gutenberg is that when there's nothing there, it's completely overwhelming. And without something like, um, without something like generate blocks and generate press, it's not really that viable if I'm honest. So all the, all the people that say it's absolute trash. I mean, I think at its core right now, it's not good enough, but with the assistance of something like generate press and generate blocks, it's definitely very viable. So, uh, one thing that I've had to wrap my head around is kind of the way that these containers work and sort of full with layouts and that kind of thing. But you have essentially the inverse of oxygen where you have you know, your, your left sidebar is your structure panel, 
whatever you call it, list view in this case. And then on the right side, you have your styling controls. So it's a little bit of a, an inverted flip from what we're used to, but it's, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, as they say. So let's see, um, let me take a look at the front end. One thing that I find really annoying is how hard it is to just open the, well, that's not true, Never mind. It's not actually that hard. You click preview and open a new tab and you're done. So I wanted to just quickly look at this and see what else I needed to adjust here. Uh, definitely have to fix these boxes over here because those are not quite right. Figure out how to get the image outside the box. And I may not even worry about that because we are on a bit of a time crunch for this particular site. Got to get the light box working. Uh, testimonials will fill in eventually. I'm not too worried about that right now. And then I left off on the footer the other day. I ran out of time. I think my laptop was dying while I was working on this. Uh, so I need to get this over to the right. Uh, this text I don't think is correct, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we can quickly fix that. So uh, let's go ahead and just work on the footer, I guess. So what we'll do is the appearance and widgets, I believe, right? Uh, no, customize. Yeah, exactly, Taylor. This, the max width website size, exactly, yep. Uh, Andre, yeah, absolutely. I didn't. I have not dismissed bricks at all. Um, the thing that I think will push me towards bricks is when I get a client site that fits the mold perfectly of working with bricks. Um, I was working with Sridhar on a different client site and he chose to use bricks. Um, and then we, I think it's great. I don't think there's any problem with bricks. I, it's just not something I've looked at right now. Yeah, Jaden, that's the city name, funny enough. You can use elements to add a custom footer. Okay, uh, right, so let's see, where is it? I was, Taylor, I was going in here to these footer widgets. So got the logo, which is of course right here. And then my second footer widget is this right here. And then, uh, Number three, I haven't done anything with yet. Yeah, so this, I will I will admit, um, elements under the appearance tab and main sidebar, oh yeah? Yeah, so I do have that. Oh, okay, so you need a different element type. So this is a layout or, yeah, I assume it's a layout, right? And then footer, four widgets, I think it's roughly four. We'll call this footer. This is all relatively new, so here we go. Um, let's see, location, gonna be entire site. No, wrong one. Oh gosh, that's super annoying. So then that's one thing I don't quite understand about the elements. Um, generate press elements footer. Let's see if we can Google. I created a custom footer. Are you using the block element? Select block. Yep, that's what it seems like. Okay. So I'll just trash this guy real quick. I don't know if there's a way to change it. Maybe there is, but whatever. Block. Okay, so this one is going to be footer. Ah, sweet. Okay, so this gives you the more familiar interface here. I got it. Block element. Got it. And then location will be entire site. That's going to be it. And then, so what I'm going to do here is pop in a container first. Then I'm going to stick in a grid inside of that. Uh, I'll do the four wide layout. And if I open the little like structure panel thing here, you can kind of see the beginnings of this. So this grid gives you the gap, you know, vertical and horizontal. Then you can control the, of course, individual container widths. So this is grid just like you're familiar with. Um, I wonder, just out of curiosity, what happens if I copy this from the front end and paste it in the back end? So I'll go with a headline. Everything is a headline, which is a little bit confusing, but you have the ability to just set the correct tag or change it to a paragraph. So I wonder if I just copy that. I mean, it's vaguely correct. That is just a, these are the standard Gutenberg blocks though. So you don't have the global controls on this. So that's not really what I want. I can just click these, I believe. Yeah, I can click it and then backspace and it deletes. So let's go here and get rid of this guy. Shift Alt Z is delete. Okay, I need to get my fingers familiar with that. 
I do love that you have the ability to copy across sites with Gutenberg blocks. That's something that is just super, super handy. You can copy them across entire sites and it works, assuming that you have the same kind of, um, what's it called? Like text stack underneath. Isn't there a way to paste until it use generate blocks headline instead of default paragraph? Maybe. That'd be awesome. All right, so now, maybe if I just add the element first, contact us. I don't know if I created a footer style for this. I think I may have just done this uh, manually, actually, because it's just the footer, so you'd only have to change a little bit. I, I got that way in Oxygen where I'd just be like, I don't really want to bother with a class like this, to be honest. So I'm assuming these are probably like an H, I don't know, four or something, maybe if, if a heading at all. Uh, yeah, they're not. So this is 18 pixels, the margarine, mar, margarine font, 400. All right, thanks, Taylor. Um, oh, and also there's multi-page editing too, of course. So that's something that I definitely needed on a recent Oxygen site. I had to have that, man, it was tough. Oh, wow, look at this, Luke. Youngster. <laughs> I love you, dude. You're the best. Moving my camera over here so I'm more centered in it. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Jaden, yes, it totally does. You're absolutely right about that. So let's go ahead and style this. Uh, we are going to go with a tag. I don't even know what we need. Maybe like an H4 or something. I I'll probably have to change this. This is super easy to adjust. So H4, the font size is 18. Uh, we have the font family of Marge or Mar Green or whatever. What's cool about this is if you type in the font name, it will automatically switch on the Google fonts if it's detected as one. No worries, Luke. Glad to have you all together, dude. And then we can just go from here. So our color back, let's see, our text. We, oh, we have global colors too. So I set these up in the customizer. Um, you can find that. I'll just show you real quick. Appearance, customize, and then I don't know exactly where it is, colors. And then there we go. So you have all the global colors. I went ahead and set the color, gave them a name, and then uh, you can reference them, of course, as the variable, which is cool. And you can add as many as you need. You can also go ahead and set those global colors to apply to certain things like your body color and all that kind of stuff, which is great. So that's where all this is coming from. So my global color here is this green, and that looks about right. So I could essentially just duplicate this a couple times. I could click one, drag it over to this grid, just make it nice and easy. Some of you are probably looking at this like, that's not very efficient, but whatever. Look, the drag and drop's making a liar out of me. Do you have to put it right there on the little square? Maybe that's what you have to do. And you are getting banned. There we go. Cool. Okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So it looks like you do have to kind of put it in there and then I don't need this heading anymore. So let's pop that out of there. So contact us. And then we had some other text here. I'm just going to copy this and then let's see how we can pop in the icon element. So can a headline add an icon? Oh yeah, it totally can. Okay. So, uh, let's just go ahead and remove this. I wonder if, if there's a shortcut. I guess if I go slash headline like that, maybe that's the easiest way to do it. So we'll change this to paragraph text. We're gonna go over here to icon, band. Luke, uh, Taylor said he had to step away for just a second for a meeting, but yeah, he is here. Uh, do we have a general icon for like a map? Uh, paper plane, close. Am I overlooking it? Let's see, I'm just gonna scan this list. Um, hmm, okay. The one thing I found that I couldn't do from Figma was take this. I wanted to take this little icon. Let's go copy as SVG. And then if I copied this into the SVG, oh, it works. It works this time. Why didn't it work before? Of course, it's making a liar out of me. That's hilarious. <laughs> icon alignment, we're going to go with top. And then what's my icon size here? 1.5, that's probably good. Super easy. And then I think this font is uh, Red Hat, which I said is a body font. That just doesn't look quite right for some reason. 
Maybe it is. But that's sick. Look at how easy that is. I think like this kind of thing is exactly what I want to do moving forward because it's like if I was working on this in Oxygen, I would have had to create like a div, then add another div and go with grid or, you know, some kind of flex layout, then add the icon, then add some margin and all that kind of stuff. This is just so much easier. So this is the kind of thing that I want to focus on moving forward, just speed and efficiency. And once I get more comfortable with this, I think it's just going to be far, far easier. So if I... Oh, control shift D is duplicate. Okay, so control shift D. I essentially have the same thing twice in different ways. So the other one is phone number. All right, and then the icon. Um, I just did the copy SVG thing, which is sick. Let's see, so I think I need to wrap this with a frame. Didn't I just do that? Uh, okay, I'll just try to copy this as an SVG. Let's see if that works. Maybe it didn't work before because it was a an, um, a text element. Let's see, icon, paste, the phone. Okay, so that's too big now. So icon size maybe one. And then I'll go with center on that one rather than top. And then this is the email address. And then the icon. Once again, I'm just gonna grab that. SVG. I mentioned earlier the thing about um, I'm trying to get my Xenon app to export Gutenberg blocks for stuff like this because it would just be so much faster. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go to xenonapp.com, X-E-N-O-N app.com, and you can click the little button to sign up for an email notification if you're interested. Uh, looks like because the icon size changed, the spacing on the right is a little bit different. So maybe I'm just going to change this to icon size one to keep it nice and consistent. That icon does look pretty small, but I wonder if it has to do with the SVG. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy that individual icon as opposed to, um, let's see, is this the correct heading? Yep. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. That looks a little bit better, but it's aligned up on the top, which I don't really like. So maybe if I just add some top 0 0.5, maybe there we go. Or maybe 0 0.3. That looks good. Solid. Okay. So there's one of our footer blocks. So I could essentially just duplicate this a couple of times. These other ones, well, maybe not because they're just text links. So that's really simple. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to go with a headline. Let's just make this paragraph. And then I don't know what they say. I'm just going to go with the same thing a couple of times. What was the what was the duplicate thing? Uh, Control Shift D. Control Shift D. This is generate blocks and generate press, Martin. So that's what I'm exploring today. This client site is uh, being built in that. So I need to figure out the spacing on the bottom. How do I how do I ban this person? Got it. I think. Uh, there we go. I think, I think I banned that person. That's, I've never had that happen before. The spam in chat. That's weird. Okay. Need some water. What are you guys working on while you're watching the stream? What are you guys working on? If anything, are you watching? You got it open in a different tab. What are you doing? I mean, the, that would be nice, but I do got a girl now. I am currently reporting a bug to the Oxygen team. Hopefully that goes well. Hopefully they fix it. I mean, I think there's been, what, three three bug releases now since 4.0 came out, so that's good. Working on a website with bricks, awesome. Doing some rather boring website chores for a client, yeah. They often are. I know what you mean. So maybe I need to change this body. So instead of, I guess, would I do something like that? No, I guess I got to do it like this. I just got to figure out how to adjust the bottom margin on this. I think by default, the, it's not line height. It's the margin bottom, I believe by default. Let's see, where's the spacing? Um, do I have to set 
line height small on all these? I guess that, that definitely is better. Yeah, Luke, I mean, in terms of next path, it's like it's definitely still torn as well. I think I think generate uh, blocks and generate press is probably the way that I'll go for simple sites moving forward. I think it's just going to be far more sustainable long term. Uh, Brooks is very intriguing. Definitely want to spend some more time with that. Of course, I've had a bunch of people in chat ask if I'm going to go that route. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tough, man. Uh, private training and then training resources. I mean, I wouldn't say oxygen is dead for me because I still have so many client sites in oxygen. There's so many things I still get requests for consulting and, and help with oxygen's web, you know, with, with, uh, people that have oxygen sites. So it's not exactly dead, but it's certainly not my bread and butter moving forward. That is for sure. So we have about us, our team and FAQs. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this whole block. So, uh, about us, I think it said our team and then FAQs. We'll go ahead and remove that headline. I thought you could just click it and then backspace and it deletes, evidently not. And then we had one other block here. I need to change the widths a little bit because these are not exactly aligned. We have a final one with the take a quiz button. So we'll take this whole container, control shift D, duplicate. This one's widths gonna be less than that. Dude, how the hell do I ban this person? Yeah, uh, I don't know why that is happening. I hid them on the channel. Is that the same name? No, it's not. Uh, have I tried Webflow? No, I haven't. I'm not really going to... Uh, Future was here, right. <laughs> it's such a shame, Chris. I don't know. How will we ever know? None of us will be happy. I can't even begin to imagine. Yeah, it was a different account, dude. Jack, uh, yeah, totally. I mean, the, the thing for me is I really want to keep things super consistent for my agency side in terms of where client sites are, um, because I really want to be able to scale that operation. If we have too many sites on too many different builders and too many different plugins and stuff, then it's just going to be hard to maintain. So I'm, I'm honestly like nervous about bouncing back and forth between things like that. Uh, and, and that is the primary reason, just because I just am worried that it will be far too hard to maintain moving forward. Uh, so then in this grid, I can, uh, I'm curious, I haven't done this approach before. So I have one, two, three, four. Oh, I already have a, a container here. So this is, these two containers are both 25%. So that's 50, then 15, 15, so 30, so that's 80. So this one needs to be 20% and that one should fit. There we go, that's exactly what I wanted. Charge clients for an upgrade, yeah, <laughs> basically. Okay, and then I can get rid of this block here. Uh, this one wasn't the paragraph styling that I wanted. This is actually not either of those. This is just generate blocks and generate press. So let's go with a headline block. This one we'll just simply switch to paragraph for now, and then we'll copy in this text and then we'll put the button styles. So what I'm going to do now is go with buttons. And then of course I already showed you the global styles. So I'll be able to go to, uh, which one was it? Oh, turns out I need a new button style. So, uh, I'll go with that one for now. That one's not correct. Like, you know, it's not consistent with our mockup, but that's okay. And then this one has a little bit of different styling on the text. So this one is May tree size 20. And then uh, May tree, May tree. And then the font size is 20 pixels. And then this one is going to say, take the quiz. Okay. Okay. So got the footer pretty much dialed in. What is this one? Um, wait, why do I have this one twice? Uh, oh, I forgot the logo. That's what I'm wondering. I was like, why is it? This seems too scrunched. What am I doing wrong here? 
Uh, so this container we actually don't need. And then, so convert to global style would be sick. Yeah, you're totally right. Jack, how do you go about hosting? Do you do any yourself, steer clear, affiliate deal or something entirely different? I did host my client sites. Third party marketers messing them up is a pain. Um, I do host basically every client site where I have the opportunity to, and of course charge a care plan fee, but um, I have it in the contracts that it says if somebody other than us messes it up and you need our help to remediate, then our hourly rate is 1.5x. So that's kind of the upshot is that if I, I give people full control, if they go in and screw it up, that's not my fault. So I, it depends. I mean, maybe that's not the right approach for you, but that's definitely the way that I do it. Uh, okay, so I wanted to add a grid item. So all I have to do is select my parent grid and click on add grid. I'm gonna drag this one back up to the top. This one's width is going to be 25%. And we'll have to do some math here, I suspect, to convert everything and make it fit. But what I'm gonna do is add an image block media library and grab this logo. For some reason, the SVG logo, when I exported it from Figma, didn't work. So I'm gonna have to revisit that. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, Jack, totally, round it up. It's not your fault that they messed it up. The padding, I'm gonna add a little bit on the right side just to space that out a bit. And then what is the math gonna look like here? So I need to move over to one of these without all of the, uh, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. so that's probably gonna be, oh, grid gap. Ah, yes, 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 good call, Taylor. Grid gap, uh, horizontal, let's go, I don't know actually what it is. 24, okay. Uh, where'd my grid go? No, wrong page. Grid, horizontal gap, 24. Perfect, good call, Taylor, thanks, dude. I did totally forget about that. So now we need to make this fit. Um, contact us. Can this one be 20 without collapsing really badly? Kind of. I don't like the fact that the, the address bu bumps the two lines, but maybe I'll have to deal with that. This one can probably, because the text is so, so short. Can it go to 15? Yeah, okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. That one there is gonna go to 15. That's fine, it's a little crammed. Okay, so now we have this footer situation going on. So this was an element in our footer. So then how do I make that appear? So we set this to entire site. Steven, yeah, it is generate blocks. Generate blocks and generate press is what I'm using for this site. Jaden, what's your thoughts on ACSS? Um, I think it's definitely got a, a, a following and it's a very intriguing piece of software. It's not something I've used except once or twice. And so I don't have a whole lot of experience with it. I think people like it, rightly so. And um, I just, I don't have a need for it right now. Um, oh, site footer. Is that all I do? This element will replace your site footer area that holds your copyright message. It will not replace footer widgets if they exist. Current year template tag. Oh, sick. So this, I think, is exactly what I wanted to do earlier, which is I said, ah, uh, yeah, look at that. Okay, so I need to make this not full width. I need to make it contained, and then I need to get rid of the widgets because I did create some footer widgets in the customizer, which is where these came from. And so if I go ahead and, and knock those out, then, of course, we won't have these duplicates. Um, but yet, yeah, I think you're right, Taylor. I think I do need to adjust these to all just be 20%. because That just looks like kind of crappy. So we'll open these, get on these containers, just make it nice and easy. I wonder, is there a way to adjust your formatting here? Um, no, okay. I was wondering if there was a way to go ahead and just adjust all of them at once. Yeah, exactly, Taylor. That's what I was thinking is now we'll be able to add that second row really easily. Okay, and then... Uh, Contain, inner container width is 1120. So that's all I have to do. So my container is full width. My inner container is contained width of 1120. Uh, the tag, we would, actually, I don't know if we need to go ahead and set it as footer because we set this 
to appear in the footer over here in our element as our site footer. So let's check the HTML on the front end. I suspect that we don't have to worry about that. So let's refresh this. There we go. Now it's contained in our page container. So if, uh, oh gosh, I'll make this full width. So if I inspect this, so this is div tag of site footer. Footer widgets will go away. So just to visualize what that's gonna look like, probably need to add some padding here. It's interesting that, that it doesn't have the footer tag. So I think I will go ahead and change this container to a tag of footer, update, and then on the front end, refresh, and now it should fix itself. Once it loads. So this container should now be footer. Yeah, there it is right there. So again, I would just wipe that out. Cool. Can you change HTML tags? Yes, I think you'll you'll now see it. You may be just a little bit behind. Uh, what did I do here to make my styles go on the side like that? I actually don't really like that. How do you make it stack? I always get confused with this thing. Whatever, not worried about it right now. One thing I want to figure out is, can I use ACF settings page to make global info like logo? I mean, I don't know. That's a good question. That would be pretty awesome if you can. Oh, it's the width of the inspect panel. Is that why? Is it? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, real quick. For those of you guys that haven't already, please drop a like on the stream for me. It's incredibly helpful. It really does make a big impact, I promise you. So the only other thing I think I need to do is take some, um, add some spacing. So it's 45 pixels left, or excuse me, top and bottom. So on my container, I'm just gonna go with 45 pixels top and bottom like that. Then let's go out of here and we're gonna go to ooh, our customizer and then uh, let's go to widgets, footer. We can go ahead and delete this widget. Oh, I guess you have to delete the content out of it as opposed to the entire widget. And the reason I'm doing this is because I already created my footer global block. So let's delete this. And then that should make the second row of the footer go away. Yes, perfect. So there is the footer that we just made. Robin just joined. Taylor told me that many times about generate blocks and press. Yeah, absolutely exploring it kind of live together. I built this page the other day because I wanted to at least have a vague idea of what I was doing. And um, I, from what I can tell so far, it's really starting to kind of flow now that I can, um, now that I've got a feel for it, I'm really starting to move. So Taylor really does. It's kind of wild. I don't know how he has time for all that. It actually makes me feel less special now, huh, Luke? It's kind of interesting. Just kidding. I love you, Taylor. I wish that I could play music on stream and not get copyright struck. Uh, so I have music playing in the background. I don't think you guys can hear that. I was looking at how to do like the little Spotify thing where you can like share the link and have people come in and listen with you, but I guess that doesn't work. Okay. Um, Oh, the other thing that I remembered is this button is not correct. So it actually gives me an opportunity to uh, show you, let me take this whole page real quick and uh, turn off the 12 grids, you can see. Um, an opportunity to show the global styles. So if we go back here under generate blocks and global styles, we have a post here for buttons. And what I'm gonna do is add a buttons element. So this one, oh gosh, here we go. This one is just gonna be called, well, that one's called secondary button, but I think I already have one called that. Primary inverted, oh no, I don't. So I'll change this to secondary button, label secondary button, the typography, is going to be, uh, let's see, 
Transform is uppercase. Weight, I think, is like 500. And then font size, I believe, is 16. Um, yep, 16, Red Hat, 400. Red Hat is my global style, so I shouldn't have to change that. 400. And I'll leave that for now. So our colors are going to be background. We're going to clear that out. And then on hover, we will, I guess, just invert it. So then our text is going to be the green. On hover, it's going to become white. Then our border color is going to be our green. And then on hover, um, white, I believe. Then we need to set our border width, which is under spacing. So border size, probably just going to be one. And we'll click that so it links it all the way around. And then our border radius, I believe it's been like five or eight, roughly. Uh, four. I knew it was something like that. Border radius of four, and we'll link that all together. And then it looks like we have some extra padding on the left and right edges. Uh, this is a full width button, actually. So, do -do 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 -do. how would I do that? Do I actually want that? Do I even have that option? Um, I think I'm just going to add some extra padding. I believe these buttons have like 24 or something on them. Left and right is 32. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, top is 16, bottom 16, and then 32 and 32. So that's good enough. And then that one looks just a little... Oh, it's not actually uppercase. It's capital case. Capitalize. So update that. So now we have that global button style. We named it secondary button. So if I go over here to my homepage, or excuse me, my footer, let's go out of here and then appearance elements, footer. Then I can go to this global style and switch it over to secondary button. And there's the one. Apparently I capitalized the A as well. So take the quiz, update that then our homepage should be good. Uh, the only thing I missed was maybe there's a box shadow on this and there is. So let's see, let's see. I wanna do that. Yeah, okay, I was thinking about doing it on the individual element. Dude, the backend speed is wild. It's wild, I, that's, a, that's another thing, good point. It's like just lightning quick. Okay, so we gotta go to effects. Then we're gonna go to box shadow and turn that on. Then we're gonna edit this. The color is just a full black and its opacity is eight. And then I believe it's zero, eight, eight, and zero, if I'm not mistaken. Zero, eight, eight, zero, yep. So it's a really faint box shadow, but now that I close this, update, front end, bam, we got some box shadow. Perfect. Looks like a little bit offset. That looks kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, look at how fast that was. We just did all that so easily. People will be like, oh, yeah, but you got a box shadow clash. Yeah, Robin, that's another one. I saw that, that thread pop up um, recently in the Oxygen group. So um, the homepage is, I mean, there's still some more stuff to do. And then I didn't know what pretzel.rocks is. I was afraid to open it on stream. <laughs> Maybe I'll open it on my phone. What is it? Pretzel dot rocks. Oh. Cool. Nice. I didn't know about that. That's pretty sick. Yeah, I'm like, I love listening to, to music while I work. You never know, Taylor. Got to be careful. I trust you, obviously. Okay, um, now I guess we could move on to another page. I mean, I need to make some good pro... Oh, actually, I forgot the bottom row of this footer. And also this pattern. Hmm. Okay, let's um, let's go back to this footer. I'm gonna open my 
container here. One thing that I realized is like, I am clicking on the left sidebar here to try to deselect everything, but you can see down here in the lower left, it does actually have all this stuff selected. So when I add a new container right now, it would go inside of you know this area, which is kind of annoying. So what I found I have to do is click this element to bring me all the way back to kind of the parent area. And then if I go add and container, then it sticks it down below. Um, the other thing is if you get your mouse in the right place in the center of the screen, then of course it'll work, but it's good enough for now. So on this container, I will actually leave this full width and then we're going to set the background. Sometimes I struggle with this, even in oxygen where I'm like, I want the background to be full width, but let's see. So the background is going to be that fountain blue, I believe, right? Yes. Then we're just simply going to take a headline element. We're going to center that bad boy. And then we'll do all this, paste that in there. I'm just going to make this paragraph. The text color here is just going to be white. We need some padding. I'm just going to assume it's like maybe eight or something, top and bottom, get out of there. Let's see, spacing, padding, top eight, bottom eight. Looks good enough to me. And then that is definitely not full width. So what do I have to do here? Full width, double full width. <laughs> Looks good enough to me. Can you use variable classes for padding? No idea, dude. Good question. I'm not sure because there's not a way to change your padding here to something other than um, one of these set parameters. You can see there's the percentage EM pixels. Perhaps there is, but I don't know of a way to do that. Not yet, anyway. I'll find it out, I'm sure. So let's update this real quick. Uh, oh, there's also the dynamic tag for year, which is pretty cool. So where did that go? I, I saw that I think in this element tag. So yeah, current year. Then if we change this to 2022 in space, Apex, I can just control B to make that bold. When it, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely focusing on new things now. Um, oxygen is still a part of my portfolio. I have tons of oxygen sites. I'm not abandoning it, but I'm certainly not using it as my main kind of bread and butter, that's for sure. So let's update this. I don't think this is gonna be full width, um, but let's take a look. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, it is, sick, okay. Um, and then why is there spacing beneath that? Is there something on the bottom of this container? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, my headline, my, my, uh, paragraph margin bottom. That's funny. Why would that be the case? That seems silly. And then it goes outside the container. I mean, that's easy to fix, but it seems really dumb. Is that the margin? Where did it go? I want to make sure I'm doing the right ones. The paragraph margin bottom 1.5 EM. None of these are set as 1.5. I mean, I guess if I just change this to zero, right? That'll be essentially the same. Oh, they're actually, you could see it. I just didn't even notice. You could see the little white space there. Interesting. So now I see, I see. Cool. So that's good. The bold, I don't really like the bold there, but I'm not too worried about it. So does it automatically convert these pixel values to EM? Oh gosh, hopefully you didn't hear my stomach just rumble now. That was loud as hell. <laughs> Thanks, Jaden. Appreciate you hanging out, dude. No, it still says font, font size 17. I was That would be sick though if it converted it forward. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Jaden. Appreciate you. I have the local coffee shop near me. That's what I got. I've been I haven't been on the Starbucks train for a while now. I think ah oh gosh, it's been probably since earlier this year. I started going to my local shop and then of course went to Europe and had all kinds of good coffee and then came back and the local shop is still solid, so that's kind of where I've been at. Okay. So, uh let's Let's add in that copyright thing real quick. Um, can I copy this as an SVG? 
Oh yeah, dude, you know how worried I am about them going out of business. <laughs> What's the um, copyright alt code? I forget what it is, 0169. Doo -doo -doo. Alt, oh, one, six, nine. There we go. Okay. Uh, second footer column heading is wrong. Uh, you're right. Good catch, dude. Training services. Good call. I think that is our footer, like, nearly done, other than the fact that this stuff is not linked yet, which is super easy. Some of those pages I don't think actually exist yet. I think these do group training. So if I type in group, oh, I called it group classes. That might be a mistake. Group, uh, let's see, private. That's a nice interface. Private training, create page, private, private training. I did not know it did that. That's pretty killer to be honest. So training resources that actually probably will become a custom post type at some point, I believe. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create that page. That is really awesome. I did not know it did that. So now, wow, that's so cool. That is very cool. Oh, it makes them as draft. I didn't notice. I was like, why, where did they go? Okay. Makes them as draft, but that's okay because then if you have it set in your um, your WordPress menu to automatically add new parent pages, then I don't think it's gonna add it as a draft, I think. But that, that interface is so much better. Oh my gosh, so much better. The only thing is it does add the link color automatically. So I guess that's one thing I would need to adjust real quick. Customize, good, yeah, Taylor, you and I are on the same exact page, dude. Uh, body header buttons, does that count button background content? Does that choose initial color? So what if I just set this to black right now to test? Does it then update? No, okay. It's actually hard to tell, Robin. That's a good question. Of course, on the front end, I don't actually know. So, where were we just now? Was that content? Footer widgets, footer bar. So these links aren't set. So link, let's go with black, link, black. Well, maybe it's one of those two. No? Yeah, I think it might be body. Oh, link, there it is right there, okay. So link, initial color, let's go with black, and then there we go. I bet that's 100% it. Yep, there we go. Okay, the other thing that it does, uh, which I think is an accessibility thing, is it automatically adds underline to links, which I honestly don't really mind. I think it looks okay. That's not something that I would have typically done, but I think that's actually pretty good. Okay, and then our team, I believe, is gonna be about us, and that page exists. Oh, wow, wait, so, uh, what was those other options? Front page, oh, okay, this just gives you the, the tag there. So I wonder if you have custom post types on the site if it automatically pops that up for you. FAQs definitely doesn't exist. Press enter, create page FAQs. So awesome, dude. It's stuff like that that's just a little time-saving things that make a massive difference. Yeah, so those pages are unpublished, so it just gives you the little page ID down in the uh, lower left. I don't think you can see that for some reason, I guess. Uh, maybe it's an overlay, so OBS is, doesn't display that properly. I'm really happy with that. I mean, that was that was just so easy. So easy. What does this look like? I haven't looked at this at all in responsive. Let's go to iPhone 12. Wow. 
I mean, I did nothing to this and it fits. In oxygen, this would look like an absolute disaster. It should auto update the link if you change the page slug if it's published. Yeah, I think you're right. So let's go ahead and what was it? I can't remember one of these pages I was going to adjust. I forget which one though. Private training, we can publish that. And then if we refresh, view page, private training. Oh, it still shows the page ID 169. That's really weird. Why would it do that? I don't like that. What if, do I have to resave permalinks or something maybe? No, weird. So what do I have to do? Maybe I refresh this. Update. Refresh. The, that page load is unbelievable, dude. My, we'd still be waiting to for oxygen to refresh. <laughs> oh, okay, so I guess it is an absolute link. That seems broken. Uh, so I guess it's kind of cool that it does that. Hmm. So private training, oh, private training. Now it's correct. Okay, that is kind of a bummer, but whatever, not a big deal. You'd have to fix that once. And most of the time I'm creating the, um, yeah, yeah, it must be Robin. I wonder if there's like a code snippet or something somewhere that would change that to automatically publish the page. But I guess that wouldn't be great on a live site if you're doing it that way, because then you have it in your site map. So there's there's trade-offs there. I, I'm sure that's probably intentional. Okay, the other thing I wanted to fix on this homepage real quick is this group classes. That dog got no junk in the trunk. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> you're right. That's actually really, really funny. Why doesn't that fit? Is it... Object fit uh, contain. Oh, is this a background? Uh, percentage. Is it cut off in Figma? Maybe that's why. Where did it go? Oh yeah, it's supposed to be on the far edge of the page, but uh, I don't think that's gonna work. I agree though, it does look kind of weird. It needs to be, it needs to have legs. Sam, thanks dude. If you ever get time to look at Webflow, I'd be happy to give you a guided tour to try it. Th thanks, <laughs> I appreciate that. What about in Figma, is this a mask? Oh yeah, it is. So what if I pull it out over here and then I export this as SVG Export dog. I'm gonna rename this real quick. Dog um, BKG all. And then if I replace this image, upload. There we go. Perfect. So I would probably go on this container. I'll try it. Backgrounds. Um, advanced, I believe. Add background. Image. Browse for my image. The one I just uploaded. Yeah, I'll just go with this one. And then position. I wonder if this is going to work. That's not going to work, is it? Because this wants a... Let's look at this up.
Oh, okay, yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Contain, contain in bottom right, and then we can undo that, and then So then uh, I guess I need padding on this container to space out that, uh, what are we doing, like 45 or something like that? Oh, no, that doesn't work. Margin's not going to work either. How do I add? How do I add some spacing? Hmm. Trying to think. Oh yeah, gap between columns, good call. Also, I could just set this container to be 50% instead of 75. And you put the container in a div. Is there divs? Oh, I guess I could do it on this one. I could do the background on this container as opposed to this one. And then that would contain it. This seems kind of silly though, because I could just use an image element at this point. Yeah, see, it's like, it's tough because this obviously is meant to be on the far right. But that's the thing I don't understand about these layouts is it's like, if the page keeps going wider and wider and wider and wider, then like, you're going to have this text with like an image that's just like moving sort of abstractly. I got you, dude. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to scrap this, honestly. It's cool, but... It's not quite fitting what I think should be situated here. So in this, uh, this one's gonna be 50%. We're gonna go image. I just wanna move on and keep making progress here and not get hung up on tiny little intricacies. So then this one probably center align. Update that. And then I think that it actually needs to be like 60, 40. Cause what was it over here before I jacked up this layout? Oh my God. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely gonna be like 60, 40, maybe even 70, 30. 66 and 33. And then more of a vertical or a horizontal gap. I'm gonna go with 45, cause that's what we've been, we've been doing. I think I want even more. I'm gonna go 75, 25. I know it's not 100% correct, but I think the text is more important than the cute dog image. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. That's fine. There's three lines on that text. So maybe it's, can I space them out and they not add up? What if I went 50? Oh, I guess I could just have a blank container, right? No, not a container in the container like that. 
Yeah, so then this one would be 25. And then dogs love to learn is not on two lines though on the desktop size. That's kind of annoying. So then Because you don't have the option to... Oh, horizontal. No. Let's go 15. So it's 50... 50... 25... Yeah. What was my delete thing? I'm I gotta remember this eventually. Get out of here. Shift Alt Z. That's kind of weird. Ah! GeForce Experience popped up. That's not what I wanted. Are you saying Taylor? I could have added the custom width to this. I, th this is the kind of thing that I just hate getting hub hung up on. I'm like, this doesn't matter. Yep. Okay. Oh, these are the other two things I wanted to address. These boxes right here. So this is not quite right. So... If you, add, if you wrap the second headline in a container, you can add max width. Okay, cool. I'll remember that for the future. So this dog image is another one of those like overlap situations. I don't know exactly what happened there. Um, so that has 20, 20 pixels around the sides. What do these containers have? I could have sworn I already set that. I did left and right. It just definitely doesn't look right. <sighs> This is another case where hmm. I need some padding around this because I have a background image set here. How would you do that? I guess another container, right? We need a wrap with container element. Because I think that's what I need. If I go with container and I put that here, is it like oxygen where I have to add something in this to be able to drag something inside of it? Okay, so then if I go padding, let's just say 24 on all sides, then I set the background color to that one. And then I need to take off the margin here, and then instead add the margin here. That's fine. Position absolute inside of a container with a relative position? Uh, probably so. I don't know if that's easy. Taylor said absolute positioning is an easy. Jason, what's up? Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I know this isn't correct to the mock-up, but I'm just gonna keep chugging along here. Is there border radius on these? Yes, there is. So eight pixels of radius. And that one's on this container. Border radius of eight. Link that all the way around. So I am just going to duplicate. Oh, not that. What is the duplicate thing? Control what? Control shift D, that's what I just did. There we go. And then these need to be swapped out. So that one's private training and learn more as well. This reminds me, this is where I um, tried to add the arrow as an SVG on the button and it didn't work. Maybe let me try it again. Cause it definitely worked just a little bit ago when we did it on that other thing. So arrow right, copy as SVG, 
then icon SVG. Oh, wow, there it is right there. That's so odd. Perfect. And then on this, learn more. Paste the SVG, icon right. Bam, look at that, so easy. And it even adds the, the padding that you need to the left, depending on which side you choose. If you go left, it adds it to the right. Icon right, it adds it to the left. That's so awesome. Just It's just it's stuff like that, it's just so easy. So easy. And then that font looks wrong. Uh, it's uppercase. And then there's a little bit of padding underneath the link. So I'm assuming like five maybe and then transform uppercase. I should have created a global style. Oh, I did. Shoot, I did create a global style for, it, for this. So let's clear this on both of these. I'm gonna update this. I'm gonna go back to my, um, where is it? Generate blocks, global styles, buttons, and then my underlying link, it's hard to see, and then we're gonna go, oh, there, I did try it. I did paste that in there. So there's my icon. Maybe this doesn't work. Maybe it's a bug in like the global styles or something like that. So padding is gonna be bottom of five. Update, and then let's go refresh our homepage and see if it worked. No, okay. I guess there's something wrong with global styles there where the SVG doesn't pop in. Okay, not a big deal. Easy to fix. Okay, and then this container, let's get to there so we can go adjust our background image. It was, oh, did I not download it? I guess not. Export, SVG, and then I need to name this, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Oh boy, had to unzip it. Why? Okay, close. There's surely somebody spamming me. Just like that, Luke, you're a moderator. Okay, cool. Sweet. Looks fine to me. And then, oh, this, this color is different. Um, background was this teal, I believe, isn't it? Oh no, it's just the lighter variant. And then this one, we could just drop the background color off of because it's gonna be inherited. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here just for continuity's sake. Just clear off that background and it's not gonna make a difference because the outer container has it. And then it looks like the widths of these are a little bit offset. So that one is basically just left aligned and the other one is right aligned. So then in our container, can I set the width of this? <laughs> you are worthy, Luke. You are indeed, good sir. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm getting a, a text in real life I have to respond to. Okay. Try adding left or right margins. Yeah, that's a good idea. That'll work, super easy. Uh, what would it be? How far away is it from the left edge? Maybe 80? Maybe that's too much, but that idea does work. Uh, how does the dynamic data work and a loop builder repeater? Yeah, dynamic data is not something I've spent a whole lot of time on, but I do know that like, for instance, on this heading, you have this dynamic data and then you can en enable uh, a lot of uh, a lot of inter uh, interesting content. So obviously your current post, you can choose 
all the standard stuff. I don't know that it has a direct integration with ACF. Maybe Taylor knows that. And then you can do dynamic link sources as well. It's relatively basic, I would say, but um, I think that it's it's viable enough, if I'm honest. And then the query loop builder, I think, did I use that on here? I don't think so. Um, the query loop builder is super easy. Where did I use that? I used it somewhere recently. Oh, on, I'm working on the premise log site on a redesign for that. And I use it on there and it's very straightforward, very powerful. And uh, I think that it's, you know, it doesn't have all the features of oxygen. Did I just totally overlook post meta Taylor? Oh yeah, it's right there. And then you can just choose your meta key. Sick. Thanks for your help, Taylor. I did not know that. So there you go, Robin. Post meta, and then you just add the, the key, the field name. You're good to go. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, it looks like when you go with post meta, you're going to search. So maybe... Um, It looks like it wants to search. So I can't tell, but it looks like it does. Okay, uh, anything else? What else is on this? I can get rid of this stuff. Refresh this real quick. That looks way better. Uh, does that not have border radius? I'm surprised. It sure doesn't, but it looks like it should. This alignment looks a little bit off though. I wanna adjust that real quick. Looks like maybe the line height of this element is throwing it off a bit. Typography, line height. Uh, can I just go with like zero? Yeah, of course they did, Robin. It was always going to happen. Uh, -boo, doo -doo -doo. That one is 31 pixels top and bottom. It's the default bottom padding. Oh, is it? Is it the default bottom padding of the whole container? Oh, of my H2. Oh, I see. I would think I'm gonna do uh, maybe some like global CSS to get rid of that. That is a little confusing. I don't really like that. Uh, I have this wrong for some reason. Ah, there we go. 32, and then I assume it was 48-ish left and right. 41, whatever, I'm rounding, that's fine. So once I click out of this, that plus goes away and the alignment should be a bit better. I think this one must have some spacing as well. Is it the line height? Oh gosh, I need that. It just doesn't look quite right, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe that is right. And there's this thing that I learned about in an accessibility talk at um, WordCamp where they were where the the speaker was talking about centering text is really bad for accessibility, which I found interesting. I did not know that. Uh, maybe maybe I should say centering large batches of text. I don't know the particulars around it, but it's something that I think is definitely worth exploring. Uh, and then this are these the same kind of spacings? Why is this? Hmm. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, I'd like to switch to a different page now. So the home page is pretty well situated. I need to figure out the light box situation later, uh, but we could move to this trainings programs. Oh, and it looks like that's nearly the exact same header. So that's super interesting. Most of the classes or most of the pages have a very similar header, which is awesome. Um, how do I like to generate press workflow? Good so far. Uh, it's a little bit slow, obviously, because I'm just figuring it out, but I mean, that's true of any builder you're going to work with. So I don't think that's necessarily a, a knock on generate press by any stretch. Training programs, edit. Uh, so then couldn't I go with my home page? I'm going to open this, select this container, copy, come back over here, Copy. Do I have to click in this field? Oh, I do. Oh, yeah! That's so awesome. So easy! It just works right out of the box. 
Okay, uh, training programs, and then that text here. So I'll just copy that. Training programs, and then I can delete that. Alt shift, what is it, Z? Oh, control shift D. One day I'll remember this. Control shift D, delete. I wanna, oh, nope. I just look at du duplicate. Shift alt Z is delete. Shift alt Z. Oh, it also is GeForce experience on my computer. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, Robin. I mean, that's the thing. It's just so fast. It's crazy. Uh, one thing is that it does show your page title in the back end. And there's a thing in Generate Press to disable that. So under the page option, if I go down here and disable the top element of content title, if I update this, I sh when I refresh, it should go away. Oh, maybe not. Uh, did, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, well, whatever. I don't really care. Not a big deal. Oh, it's a front end thing. Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. And then this one doesn't have a button. So there's a little, there's a little effect back there that I didn't notice until just now, like some clouds. Maybe I could just combine that with that image. I think that's what I would do. Rather than trying to figure out how to format those images, just like combine these into one frame. So go like this. And then where, where was that frame? This one is that frame. Hmm. Yeah, Mystic Man, there definitely is. I forget how to do it exactly though. I think it might be to do with the... Uh, elements and full width layout and then disable elements as content title and then I think display rules I'd had it set as home and then if I go add location entire site I think it'll work you were faster than me Taylor thanks dude okay so if we go training programs now and refresh no nope. um don't know why that is kind of weird I got distracted though, because I was looking at this group and then where's my group 163 and then this frame. So if I control G, those should group together. So now all that will be, one oh no, that's not what I want. Where is my individual cloud background thing? Is it a different frame? Okay, so I need to stick this inside here. So there's that, and then there is our cloud. So these two get grouped together. So um, trainer with clouds. So then if I undo that, I don't want all this extra width on here, I don't think. That, hmm, I don't think this is going to work that well when I export it, but I'm going to try. It's so annoying how it zips this stuff when you download it from Figma. I'm not sure if that's like a setting mistake that I have or what that is. I don't know. So let me find my background image here. I'm going to try to upload this again. Yeah, Taylor, I know I know I can do... Oh, there we go. That works. That's all I had to do is just swap it out. That's perfect. So I'll, I'll do the homepage in a little bit. Oh, I can do it right now because I have multi-page editing. <laughs> Forgot about that. Oh, and it even updates with my new design without refreshing. That is so awesome. My new upload without refreshing. Did it update the front end already? Look at that. Look at that. Yes. So good. If you're still here and you haven't already, 
Drop a like on that stream for me, please. I so appreciate it. Okay. So our training programs, good to go. Good menu builder. Uh, good question. I don't know. Right now I'm just relying on the one that's kind of built in. So there is an elements thing when I go, let's see, generate blocks. Where is it? I always get confused here. So generate press. There's a thing called menu plus. So what, what, what happens if I activate that? Where's the settings here? Is that in customizer? Menus. No. Off canvas. What happens if I do that? Where's my off canvas button? I don't know how it works quite yet, Robin, but that's a good good uh, thing for me to figure out because you're definitely gonna need more than just basic menus for sure. That was always such a sticking point for me for oxygen, was, or a sore point, I should say, which is how difficult it was to um, build anything more than just a basic menu. Oh, in the customizer, Taylor? Ah, here we go. Primary navigation. Navigation search. Yeah, Robin, that's what's such a bummer. Everything that we all, all wanted is in there. Oh, that's cool. There's a search built right in. What does that look like? Oh, it goes way over there. That's interesting. I'm sure that's adjustable, though. Mm, we don't need that right now, so we'll go ahead and just publish this. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, off canvas panel, off canvas on. Publish. And then primary navigation. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Menus. Min menu is going to go to off canvas, publish. Okay, it's over there. So there's got to be a way to control how this looks. Now that I have the menu in there, if I go to layout, off canvas panel, desktop toggle label. I don't know what that does exactly. Oh, you can just give it a, a label. Style is slide. Slide is going to be right. Close button inside. Okay. Yeah, Block Studio for sure. Block Studio and Generate Press is definitely a, a killer combo. The only thing that I'm not 100% sure about with that combo is um, blocks. You don't quite edit them in the same way. You're kind of editing the content in the sidebar, which is okay. So surely there's something I'm missing here with this styling in the off canvas panel. Seems like you have some some you know, awesome controls here, but is there a way to add more? What if I go to widgets off canvas panel? Here we go. Headline. Let's just pop this one in and say test. Look at that. Ah! That's amazing. Yeah, Taylor, that totally makes sense. Damn, that's so awesome. So you can just start adding your own stuff in this off canvas panel. Let's just pop in an image just to test. Look at that. <laughs> oh boy. Man, that is legitness. So it's just a widget. It just adds a widget and you can stick anything in there because it's just, I mean, blocks. That is cool. That is really, really cool. So then, can I control, I can control the styling here, I believe, by going show more settings. I could change this to one of my global styles. 
Yeah, that's really awesome. So you can do all of the global stuff too. You still have all the generate press controls, generate blocks. I don't know which one actually it comes with. Generate press is the theme, which I think is controlling a lot of this stuff, like the off canvas. And then generate blocks is like the headline component we've been using, the image block and so on. Man, that is super cool. So then, Do I have to, sure, surely they don't expect you to use custom CSS to style that off canvas panel. There's no way. I mean, maybe, maybe, but I wouldn't think so. Oh, there's overlay too. That's so cool. Uh, let me just Google it. Their, their forums seem to be good. Generate press off canvas styling. Oh, okay, maybe they do. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like they do. I mean, these these forum threads are from 2019, so maybe there's something I'm missing. Very interesting. Uh, okay, so it would take a little bit of CSS, but I feel like most people that spent a good deal of time with Oxygen would be fairly adept at something like this. So we don't actually need an off-canvas panel in this, so I'm going to close this, but I think that's a really sick preview of the off-canvas capabilities and the menu builder component here. Um, that that uh, makes me think. In the widgets... We got a header. What does this do? Where does this go? Okay, so in line with your header. Uh, I mean, definitely a use case for that, I would think. Custom CTA, anything like that. Doesn't have to be tied to your menu. Cool. Uh, have I heard or seen of Pine Grow? Yes, I've definitely looked at it. I've um, considered it. It's probably a little bit overkill, and if I was gonna go with something like that, so so powerful and like you know that kind of thing, probably go with something like bricks maybe. But I mean, the sad reality of it is that oxygen is still great. That's the bummer. Um, so I don't know. I, I, it's a case by case basis for me, but most of the stuff I think I'm gonna be working on is gonna be generate press, generate blocks moving forward, just because of the type of client sites that I'm gonna be taking on. And then um, I mean, it's just you can see how powerful it is. We're not having to do all that much to make it really like just work well. So next up is we have this group classes thing. Um, what are we going to do with this? So this is just a three grid. So I can just go 33% each. So I'm padding on this. Yep, Taylor, perfect, exactly. Okay, so again, I don't know if maybe the proper way to do this is combining all containers into one, but the way that I've been doing it um, is, uh, actually, no, I think I'm going to do what I said. I think I'm going to add another kind of top level container inside of that is going to be a grid. This grid is going to be three by three. This one is going to have a headline block. There we go. Keyboard nav for the win. Uh, I don't know what that said. Let's just say group classes. Uh, good question, Robin. I assume it's a proper grid. Let's take a look real quick. Mm -mm -mm. Let me expand this out so we have a little bit more width so I can see what I'm working with here. Um, are these my grid children? Yeah, they are. Looks like, looks like it's a flex wrap and then, yeah, it's just set as the width of what you choose. 
it is pretty funky. You're right, Taylor. So it's flex wrap with a flex wrap of wrap. <laughs> That's a lot of wraps. And then there's just the widths set on the containers. So I don't know. It works, I guess. Hate the pop-up modal menu in Gutenberg. Yeah, um, I don't know. So this second container, we would go with a layout inner container of 1120. Maybe there's a global style to control that, but that's just how I've been doing it. Um, we're gonna go with slash headline, and then I don't know exactly what this says. I'm just gonna add in a paragraph for now. So then an image, and then this one is also going to be an image. And then the grid component works fine. It seems like it. This is not vanilla Gutenberg. No, this is um, this is generate press as my theme and generate blocks as well. Okay, I need to grab these images out of Figma real quick. So let me make sure this is all as one frame. Yeah, okay. SVG, I need to name these things. So this one is going to be lab. We'll just call this one lab. And then this one is going to be dog walker. So we will select these two. Actually, I'm gonna do all these at once so I don't have to come back to this. I can't tell what this says. Playing with doggo. And then this one is going to be, I don't know, dog, Im, doc, dog, Tongue. <laughs> Taylor, yeah. Yeah, probably not. Uh, let's see. Is it shift? I already forgot. Shift. Playing with dog. Dog tongue. Uh, lab and dog walker. So we'll select those four. Export as SVG. It zips it because it's all different. Close, close. So Robin, um, what's gonna end up happening is the Xenon app is changing. I'm, I'm switching it to um, work with Generate, or excuse me, Gutenberg, that's the plan. Uh, it's not ready yet, but I'm working on it as we speak. Uh, I don't want to do all four of these at once. So one thing that I thought I saw earlier is if I go to my media library, I upload these images, then it looks like I don't even have to refresh the page and all of my images are there. So if I go media library, wow, look at that. Yeah, Robin, that's mine. It's uh, something I haven't heavily promoted because the launch was a little bit of a bust. And, uh, so I'm retooling it. We're going to change the pricing, change all that stuff. It's going to be way, way, way better when it finally comes out. So it's going to be the lab one and then the dog walker one. And then dog walker. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but you can see I didn't even have to refresh this page and all my images are selectable, which is awesome. So then if I just duplicate this grid, it'll go down beneath it. Then in this grid, the image is first. And then replace this with the dog walker. And then this one, we're gonna replace with this dog. Uh, Robin, yeah, there, there actually can't really be an LTD for that app because it costs money every time, you know, someone uses it. So it's not something that I'd be able to offer that on anyway. Vertical alignment is center, and then there probably needs to be some padding in these containers with the text. And mm, 80 is going to be too much, I think, for the lower breakpoints. Uh, let's just go with. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Let's just go with 40 for now. Even that might be too much. Oop, spacing, padding, 40. And then what do these say? Group classes, there's some text, and then there's a learn more. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> private training, this is private training. Okay, and then um, we can go with buttons. 
And then our global style, we're gonna choose primary. I think that button width is too big. There's something wrong with the padding or, or something like that. But thankfully, since it's all global, we can go in and adjust it in a little bit and fix it. Yep, she is very, very talented. Okay, and then uh, there's must be some. What's the what's going on here? Why is there gap between those two? They should be touching. What did I do? Uh, is it vertical gap? No. Oh, container. Um, move the children to one grid element? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes way more sense. Nope. Control Z, go back. What did I just do here? The drag and drop is like oxygen. It's kind of wonky. I'm gonna get this so out of order trying to fix this. There we go. No! No, I didn't. Man, okay. So, I wish, can you just use arrow keys to reorder this? No, you can move it down though like that, which is great. This is way out of order. So the lab one should have been first. Control up arrow. No, it doesn't work. Up, up. 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 And then that one goes down. There we go. That wasn't too bad. That's kind of nice. And then this grid can go away. So remove this component. Oh. It's the padding on this. That's That's what screwed me up. Oh, and then, uh, whoops, I need to unlink this before I make that change. And then once I click out of it, then it will remove that plus. That, hmm, that's interesting. That's so weird. It's like the, it's like the padding almost like bleeds out for some reason. What if I, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Luke, you're so right, dude. When I'm like, control Z, I'm like, oh, no, it didn't work. Oh. <laughs> you're so right. We're coming up on two hours for this stream. This has been great. Uh, so got to send a message real quick. Two. Sweet. Okay. Um, yeah, Taylor, you're right about the images, but like... Seems a little odd that it would be that way. So do I need to set the grid stretch? Because uh, stretch would fix it too, wouldn't it? Maybe that's a CSS change. Or it's not grid, but I mean the flex container. Yeah, so the, is this my child container? There it is. So this is the one that has flex and flex wrap on it. So then as your screen width changes, that is interesting. It makes the effect more prof profound or pronounced, I guess is the word. Stratos, what's up, man? Good to see you. And we just have a fixed width to the child grid container so they can only be a certain, ah, okay. So even if we do the, the stretch, it won't work. What is that? Um, is it justify content stretch? Justify content. Uh, align items stretch. 
Yeah, you're right. I see. I see. Okay, I was just trying to figure out. Uh, interesting. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, that's kind of a bummer. So I have to go back and adjust that. Uh, Stratos, this is generate press and generate blocks. So I have to do it to each of these containers. That's kind of a bummer. Labby wabby. And then delete. Oh, that just works though. It's just so easy. Who would have thought? Image size full. And then do I need to do anything other than just cover? Is it contain? No, okay. So it's gotta be cover and then center center, which it is by default. So that's actually really awesome. You don't need all these image elements then. Okay, and then uh, background, my dog walker friend. These SVGs should keep this page super lightweight too, which is exciting. I cannot wait to see what the performance looks like on this. It's gonna be screaming fast, there's no doubt. Okay, uh, doo -doo -doo, this one, look at that, there we go. So there we go. Um, that's exactly what we wanted. Let's just take a look front end real quick, bam. Let me go adjust the primary button global style real quick because it's just so obviously wrong. Uh, not local patterns, global styles, buttons, and then button. I, I don't think those are the same across the pages. Oh, they're not. That one's called primary button. And then that one's also called primary button. So, But those are different. That has a different background color. I'm gonna create a new global style here and then um, let's go plus buttons and then global style. We're gonna call this one button thin, or let's just call this thin button. Thin, got it. Would love to see services for CPT and implementing it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Not sure if we'll get that to get to that today, but that'd be awesome. Using images as background, you lose the possibility to use alt tags, etc. intended. Um, well, I mean, these are just decoration, thankfully, but the alt tag should still appear, right? Because it's uh, something that would come from WordPress. And then custom alt uh, attribute. Couldn't you just add an alt tag? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to check out quickly yet, Stratus. I definitely am intrigued by it. Uh, let me let me continue doing this. I got distracted answering a question. So eight pixels top and bottom, twenty two left and right. So this button we're gonna go uh, eight pixels top, eight pixels bottom, twenty two. 22 border radius has been roughly around the four mark. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to gamble on that. Uh, our darker green and then our hover color. Let's just go with the lighter green for now. That'll be totally fine. Our text transform is uppercase. And then uh, white looks like it already is. Looks like that font is a little bit more bold too. It is 500. Okay. That looks fine. And then the border radius, is that four? Just to be consistent. Yeah, it is. That's what I thought. Awesome. So now we have that new global style. So we can just simply go to our page, wherever it is right here. Um, yeah, uh, Luke, the that transition is just there. I think it's just a default. So that's a good thought though. If I go to effects, transition, looks like that just does it by itself. But it was off, so I guess that's just a default. So I, I like it. I think that's totally fine. I think that's exactly what a transition should just be. Super simple. Wanted to make sure I didn't have a conflicting tab open real quick, which doesn't actually matter. Okay, so primary style is going to be thin button. Thin button, there we go. So now we got that global style applied. And voila, good. So what do those buttons actually say? They're both just learn more. Nice and easy fix. Learn more. Yeah, that is an amazing combo. 
Look at that. Gorgeous. Bellissimo. Uh, okay, what's next? This section. This is uh, this one will be fun. Uh, I don't know exactly how we're going to get this image overlap. I really like the image overlap in this case. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open my little sidebar here. I'm going to click the page element to go to the top level. Then I'm going to go to uh, container. Then inside of this, I'm going to add in another container because I'm going to end up putting that background pattern and color on here. And then this one is going to be inner container width of 1120. So let's go ahead and stick that background on it. Uh, this pattern, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to try to grab wherever it is. Where is that? Is it an image pattern? Where is it? Oh, it's a background PNG. Okay, maybe um, maybe I'm gonna go, let's try to export this as an SVG. Does that work? Where is the background pattern though? No, I guess I can't do that because that's gonna export this whole section. Uh, good catch, Taylor, about the cursor pointer thing. I don't really like this background pattern being an, a, a PNG, but maybe that's just how this is gonna have to be. I guess I could use, whatever. Bones background pattern is what we're gonna call this. So then this container, we're gonna go, our image will be this one. Yeah, that would totally work, Luke. So then this container has a background color of white. So we can just simply scroll down here to colors and go with background of white, which is one of our variables. Let's just stick in a headline real quick. And then this container, it's inner container width is going to be what? Um, 730 roughly. I said 1120 earlier, but I meant 730 because it's not the full width. Okay, so there we go. We just had to change that container to contained width of 730. Uh, let's add some padding to be consistent with this. So it's 80 top and bottom. We don't need to worry about left and right. Okay, so there we go. And then this container is going to need some padding. So this one is 40, 40, let's say. 40 and then 72 on the right. So this container is gonna have 40 top and bottom. And then I think we're gonna need left and right. So there, that works for now. So we got our headline, what does it say? Not sure what class your pup is right for. So that's an H3. So I think we have a global style for that. Yep. And then we got another headline that we're going to need, and this one we're going to change to paragraph style. There we go. And then slash buttons. I don't think I have an orange button yet. So I would just simply need to duplicate the primary one. This one here, the one that we just created. So I'm just simply going to duplicate this. We are going to rename this to however the hell you spelled tertiary. Just gonna copy that. Uh, where did it go? Right here. Tertiary button, lowercase, because everything else is lowercase, so I'm gonna keep it consistent. Tertiary button. And then we have all the same parameters from before, so our background is just gonna change to the pink, low lightish, whatever this is called, frolly. Beautiful. Update. Then we can simply just, I'm gonna just update this so we have everything we need. Do I even have to refresh this actually? Oh yeah, you do. You do have to refresh it to get your global style, but that's not bad. The page is so fast, it doesn't really matter all that much. So we're going tertiary. Yeah, it does look like fresh salmon. You're totally right. And then 
that's all in another container, which is kind of pushed over to the right. So maybe we would go grid inside of this, actually. Let me expand this, make sure we're in the right spot. So inside this container, let's go with the grid. Grid 50-50. Container, can I drag stuff straight into this container without a problem? Oh yeah, you can. Okay, so I think the problem I had earlier when I was having an issue with the drag and drop was that I wasn't dragging it right onto that little icon. Pretty sure I gotta get it right in there. So let me try to move this over. Yeah, and it works like a charm. Okay, awesome. That's all I had to do. And then once something's in there, you can see you get the little indicator and it's far easier. Oh. Oh, now I'm making a... Oh, I just dragged in the wrong element. That's why. Okay, and then the button is going to go down there. Come on. Come on. There we go. Just selecting the wrong thing. There's like a nested button thing, so I guess you can do side-by-side -side buttons pretty easily, which is awesome. Okay. One thing I just noticed that I wasn't even paying attention to is I'm not even having to worry about spacing on all this. It just does it. You can control the global spacing, of course, but it just happens for you, which is awesome. So sick. Um, I think I'm going to go on this container here. And then our image background is going to be this pup. Let's call this question pup is going to be our image name. Also, the issue you had before with clicking white space but still actually being inside an element doesn't escape work. Oh, good question. Let me check, dude. Uh, did I? Oh, I didn't export this. Let me do that real quick. Export SVG question pup. Don't zip my shit, Figma. Um, back, back, back. Question pup, there we go. We'll fix that here in a second. So now that I have this selected, if I press escape, no. Oh, wait, maybe you just have to press it more than once. Oh yeah, it does. Why is it not working when I selected that one thing? It definitely is. Huh. Okay. Uh, was it this container? Yeah, this is the container that I uh, had the background on. What happens if I change it to advanced image? That's weird that when I change it to advanced, it doesn't clear out that image. That's funny. Uh, so it looks like you can use a pixel value so can I go negative pixels? Negative five, let's go negative 25. And then I wonder, since it's on a pseudo element, could I then use a Z index and make the pseudo Z index higher? And then that way the overlap would work. Um, hmm. Okay, so I had some other CSS in my customizer from before, which may not be the place that it ends up living permanently. But then on my training programs, if I refresh, let's find this image pseudo. There it is right there, the before. So all I would need to do is Z index. Oh, not 25 pixels, 25. Shouldn't that work? And then does my actual element need a Z index too? Oh yeah, overflow is hidden. Uh, 
Do we need to go overflow visible? I'm trying to think, what else? Oh wait, I just noticed I typed in Comtain, so maybe that's freaking it out. Update, refresh. Oh. <clears throat> so Z index. And then let's take off this overflow. Okay, so th that had nothing to do with it. Uh, I think you need to use left and bottom instead of BG position. Okay, that that works. So let's take this, oh gosh. Let's take this off and then our left, let's go with like negative 25. Oh yeah, that's all you have to do, okay. So then it actually isn't left though. So our left can be zero. Our top can be something like, I don't know, negative 50 maybe negative 50 pixels, and then bottom can be like negative 50 pixels. Sweet! And then the left looks like it's bumped over a bit, so how far is that? 72 pixels? Um, boodly -boo, boo boodly boo Left is 72 pixels roughly. I mean, that's freaking awesome. So now actually I could could go back and do the overflow um, kind of, oh shit, my phone's ringing. My laptop is closed and it's ringing. That's so funny. Look at this. My Mac is closed and it was just ringing. That's hilarious. I did not know it did that. Okay, so yeah, that's, it. that's how we can do the overflow. Overlapping image like that. That's so easy, dude. That's amazing. Okay. So all we would need to do is just go like that. And then, yeah, I mean, that's that's just not bad. It, it positions it as a pseudo element for you from the outset, which is amazing. So I'm just gonna take all this, simply copy that right in. And I wonder if it will respect this without doing any um, importance. So let's publish this. I'm gonna refresh. Uh, and then what did I do? What was the other thing? Was it the overflow? Is that the other thing I turned off? Is that it? Seems like it's cutting it off weirdly. Oh, the background position. I need to clear that. So background position, I can just close this. Is that all I need to do? And then overflow on the parent container. Oh, dude, it's so easy. Oh, it's so easy. Oh, man, I love it. Overflow uh, unset, right? Can I just do that? Or do I just go visible? I'll go visible just to make it consistent. Oh, wow. So simple. Let's go. I love it, dude. All right. That worked fantastic. And then this says, take, take the quiz. Yeah, dude, I hope you're clapping on your side too. I'm really, really enjoying this. I've got to admit, this is really fun. And then, oh, there's actually some gap here. So if there's 40 pixels on this grid, so I'm just simply going to this container here, margin bottom of 40, update, voila. Okay. All right, real quick, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, take a quick break, but I'll be right back. So don't run away. If you haven't liked the stream yet, please do. I genuinely appreciate it. 
I'll be right back. Yo, I'm really, really happy with how this is coming along. I've already um, realized I'm going to make a, <laughs> a more polished tutorial video on this, so I appreciate all of you. Um, one thing is, this little container here has some border radius on it. I'm assuming it's four. Oh, it's actually eight. Easy peasy. Where's my... Is it this one? Yeah, okay, it's this one. Border radius, eight. Boom. The only thing that I noticed is that um, with the customizer CSS, of course, you don't see the exact thing. So what if you use something like code snippets or advanced scripts and set it to load everywhere? I wonder if that would work. Or maybe, th maybe that's just a limitation where the, the editor preview is not exactly the same. <clears throat> Oh, that's so dope, dude. Wow. Oh, it does work. Sick. Okay. Dude. Oh, oh, well, other than the heading right here being incorrect, this page is done. 
Private training. I think I updated the text. Oh, I just got these mixed up. So this container, surely there's a better way. I wish control shift. Oh, you can shift to shift arrow keys to select multiple containers. That's pretty interesting. So couldn't I, could I go like this? Could I select these two? So shift down, oh, shift. Ah, ah, oh, oh God. Oh, no. Control Z, no, what did I do? <laughs> I thought I broke something very badly. Uh, apparently I didn't. I'm trying to figure out if I do shift and down arrow key. I don't know how I just got that. Yeah, escape, escape. <laughs> I was hoping I could select multiple of these and move them all at the same time, but apparently that's not gonna work. So all I need to do is take this one, bring it up to the front, and then this one, I just need to bring it to like uh, that position. Easy. <laughs> Update, boom, and then private, private training. All right, I'm holding control, click, click. No, it doesn't let you do it, unfortunately. Bummer. This page is done, people. That was awesome. Thanks for your help, everybody. That, I mean, that was a group effort right there. This one seems like it has a lot more padding. I don't think I need the margin bottom 60. Yeah, that looks good. Dope. Okay. So onward to the next one, group classes. This one is gonna be a bit tricky. This might be a case where we need a custom post type and some dynamic data, very well could be. Yeah, this is gonna get tricky fast because we need Oh, <laughs> of course, Taylor. Oh, by the way, I was going to say, so, you know, I said I, I've not been on the Starbucks game. I actually lied to you. So I've been getting these a lot. These little things. They're so good. They're like, oh, also, yeah, they're like two. They're, I was going to say they're like two dollars and 50 cents. So like one pound 50, maybe. Um I, I figured that Taylor and Luke were probably so confused when I left because I said I was going to the bathroom and they're like, what's that? I should have said, I'm going to toilet. So that's where I went. They're probably worse than normal. They're actually not, dude. I really like these. I, I like them, have gotten snooty about my coffee, but I actually like those quite a bit, which is funny. Okay. Uh, bo -bo -bo -bo. I've been in Japan too long for bathroom to sound normal. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so we just need to copy the section off of this training program. So we're going to take this container and then we have another page. What is this one called? Group classes. Group classes is here. So then all I have to do is just click in here right? And just paste and bam, it just pops right in. Awesome. The other thing I'm going to do is on this page, I'm going to change, oh, content title is just gone. Maybe that was a mistake from what I did before. Update. Uh, I'm just curious if, oh, not draft. Nope. Um, I'm just curious if it shows, no, it doesn't. All right, perfect. Okay. So I'm going to leave this training program page up just in case we have something that we want to copy off of it, but I don't think we will on this page. Uh, this background image is different. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, rename this. So we're going to call this one dog walker BKG export SVG. I don't understand why Figma zips this, even though there's one file. It's so annoying. When I'm on my Mac, it's not that big of a deal because it's one click. 
but on Windows, it's pretty annoying. Uh, group classes. And then is our image right here? Yes, it is. Upload. Uh, this one. Okay. So the page title is just group classes. Got a bunch of text here to copy in. Oh, not training programs. I'm going to close that out so I don't actually make that mistake. Group classes. And then... And then explore more, to, more about each of our group classes below. So this we can actually just add in a custom icon, which is awesome. So I'll just go ahead and duplicate that heading. I'm gonna make this like that. Um, maybe we'll go global style. I don't know if we have the right one. No, okay, I'll just, I'll just style this one for now manually and then if there's a case where we end up using that again I'll come back and make it a global style. So weight of 500, it is 15 pixels and then the color is that spade black which I think is our body text so I don't think this is actually going to do anything. Yeah it didn't. That's fine I'll just clear that off. And then there's a little bit of letter spacing Go with medium. And then, is that the red hat text? It is, that's our body text. So we don't need to worry about that. So that's good. And then what we can do is down here with an icon, I'm gonna take this, copy as SVG, icon SVG, there it is. And then icon location above, Oh, can you not? Hmm. <laughs> I, I gotta give the person credit for their persistence, whoever this is. I also had a, uh, a sign up to my email list recently, which is super funny, that uh, the person just signed up. It said, fuck you, Johnny boy, at like gmail.com or something like that. It's pretty funny. Whoever that hater was, I laughed. So I appreciate that. Oh, good idea, Taylor. Yeah. Probably was Lewis. No, just kidding. It definitely wasn't him. He doesn't got time for that. Somebody with way too much time on their hands. That's for damn sure. So if I remove the text, I wonder if it do if like fully does not output the text on the front end. I suspect probably so. Also, I wish I could rename these things in this structure panel. And then our margin bottom here, I'm going to change this to a lot less because it's, it's only eight as opposed to, I think the default is 20 or 20, oh, not 80. Wait, what? When I do it margin bottom of eight, it makes it like massive that's so weird is it actually that way on the front end Wh what oh it's em i <laughs> gotcha <laughs> i should have known that that was stupid okay and then how far over does that image come? oh it comes pretty far all the way like underneath this text and then it looks like there's a bit more spacing under here to kind of stretch that out a bit. So perhaps on this, would I go margin bottom of maybe like 40? Uh, let's go with like three EM. And then on this one, I could actually change it back to margin bottom of, uh, what would that be 0 0.5 EM or one? That'll work. And then I probably need a little bit more margin here to make the image kind of right where it is. So that little doggy is over the text like that. Okay, that works. And then I wonder if there's a way to set this width. 
so that the text kind of wraps a little bit. In line with? Oh no, okay. That's fine, not really too worried about it. It'll be totally fine. Plus it's gonna be annoying to work with that on different screen sizes. Okay, so then I'm gonna press my escape. <laughs> it didn't work. You have to be clicked in the editor for it to work. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, now what? So I guess I am gonna brainstorm with you guys. So the idea here is that you click one of these yeah, dude, I smashed the hell out of that button. You click one of these and it changes the content on the right. So there is definitely not an existing component for this. So there is no accordion, right? No. Tab? No. Hmm, Taylor seemed to think this was a walk in the park. So I'm curious what your idea here is, Taylor. Uh, Luke, in my playlist here, I know I've told you this before, uh, Shingo Nakamura just came on. So if this is a custom post type, we could definitely use the query loop builder to output the contents over there. This is my go-to Gutenberg item for extra stuff like this accordion. Where does it show me the blocks? Star rating forms, tabs, Lottie, review, taxonomy, how to, FAQ, inline notice, heading, call to action, content timeline, icon list, multi button, Table of contents, team, and testimonial. Yeah, there definitely is some overlap. I hope you can, uh, oh shit, I just banged my desk, whoops. Hopefully you can turn some of it off. Oh, okay, you only enable what you need, like Oxy Extra, sick. So then, uh, do you have any idea off the top of your head which one of these is gonna be best? I presume tab, maybe? Yeah, okay, as long as we can format these. Select border, margin, choose what tab, add icon and modify icon stylings in the tab header, set tab header alignment style with body color stylings and tab title. I mean, that looks like what we need. How to schema, FAQ schema, that's dope. That FAQ schema is gonna be super helpful because we do have an FAQ page. All right, so, Spectra. Let's see what we got here, add new. Spectra, WordPress, Gutenberg, plugins. I've never even heard of this and it's got 300,000 installs. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, deactivate all. And then I only want tabs for now, activate. Used to be called ultimate add-ons. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe I had heard that. So now if we go back to our group class, I honestly may not do a post type for this. There's just not really a reason to. If it's easy to edit, then there's not a reason to. Tabs. Spectra rebranded, got it, that makes sense. No, I don't want that garbage. Get this out of here. Unless there's like a text tab thing that I could build. No, get out of here. 
Uh, okay, so tab title settings. Initial open tab, tab one. Okay, that's fine. Horizontal vertical style six. Vertical style seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. I need a new container. Oh, I, I thought I did. I, I, I intended to. Maybe I didn't update the page when I actually added it a little while ago. I thought I did. Tab. Let's get rid of that. Remove tab. Container, inner container width is going to be 1120. There we go. Yeah, looks like it, Taylor. That's fine. I think we can make this work. Tab title settings. Tab alignment. Text alignment left, enable icon. Is it an icon for all of them? Title text color. Hmm. <laughs> So we have an image. I wonder if we can customize it. Let me update this and let's look at the code on the front end to see how it's adding that. Two seven two EA two D nine. Uh where's my SVG? I thought I just inspected that. 2D9. Okay, so it looks like it's the same class name. I was wondering if maybe we could just use like custom code to change the icon. Do these have unique IDs? I guess you could just use int child, right? In the child one or whatever. Oh yes, more coffee. One o'clock. I appreciate it. all of you hanging out so long. If you're still here and you haven't done it, please drop a like on the stream. Sounds good, Luke. Thanks, dude. Let me keep playing with this a little bit. Oh, also this tab layout is definitely a bit wider. New limited edition Coke. Zero sugar. Oh, whoa, cool. That's pretty sick. Can I change the width of this in here? Advanced. No, border settings. Looks like I'm going to have to do it on the front end, I suspect. Display flex. And then that one's flex grow one, and this one's max width 75. So realistically, I could just change this to 50%, right? And then this, since this is set as flex grow, it's gonna take up that space. And then are these max width? Oh, there it is, right? There's a max width. I didn't see that. Seems like it should be there now. Just 
kind of looking at what we need to make this work more. Override max and min with 200. Oh. Well, actually, we'd want it like 50%. Okay. And then can we just change the li item? All right, all right, all right. Here we go. So flex direction column. Uh, flex wrap, wrap. So that one's 50%, that one's 50%. I always get confused with flex row. I don't think we need flex direction, right? Oh, and then there's margin on one of them, isn't there? You're so fast at that, Taylor. Thank you. Hmm. I'm just wondering if it's worth spending the time for this. It overrides the columns below in CSS on this container. Oh, I see. Yep. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Definitely getting there. And then could you just make the tab content? Oh, is the split as display? I want the individual tab content to stack. Maybe this is not the right selector. Oh, display inline flex. Yeah, this site definitely was not uh, designed with that in mind. Okay, we're making progress here. This is going to take some revisiting of the CSS, but I, I think this is definitely possible. Can you add... Uh, alternatively, make them static with divs and link to separate pages. So it would be like, are you thinking group classes and they would all have this header and then like beginner basics training? I mean, I'm kind of thinking, what if it was the, what if it was custom post types? If it was a custom post type, that seems like it would help us, right? Yeah, I'm not really stoked on this tab approach, even though I think that is the right way. Uh... Yeah, yeah, you're right. Hmm. I'm trying to think. 
because there's a lot of content to build out inside of these. So doing them individually could be kind of a pain. Yeah, Kyle, I'm really, really enjoying Generate Press. Check this out. So we got this. Uh, let's see. Let me go back. We can go. We got the home page pretty much dialed in. Got this all situated. The only thing we haven't done is the overlap here, but we did um, quite a bit of this other stuff. We got the, the where, where was it? I guess it's a different page. Um, but yeah, we got the home page pretty much dialed in. We got, what was the other page we did? Uh, training programs, was that it? Yeah, we got this page, Kyle. Got this one all dialed in. Got a little image overlap effect going on, which is pretty sick. Really enjoying this. So now we're moving on to the next page. There's a time crunch on this site that I have to get out to the client. So uh, I'm definitely pushing. I, I still got to keep working on this even when I stop streaming later. So you can use reusable sections and pattern library. That's not a bad idea. Couldn't you do that with a custom post type, Taylor? I guess the, the thing you wouldn't have there is the dynamic um, like sort of selection of the, the page that it's on. If it was a button, is there some code we could use to swap this? Like a, not like an iframe, but like, yeah. Kyle, the, the debate here is this site obviously wasn't created with Gutenberg in mind. So there's this thing this kind of tab section where if you click this button, then of course this content changes. Um, the client has seen this, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm curious what option we have or maybe what approach you would take here, Kyle. I actually haven't created a template yet for a custom post type in Gutenberg, generate press, generate blocks. So I'm not 100% sure if that's the right way to go. Let's hear it, I'm ready. I have a feeling what you're gonna say is scrap this layout and do something different, which is kind of, I, I, yeah. CPT route for sure. Yep, this is tabs for sure. Me and Taylor, before you hopped in, we were looking at this uh, ultimate Gutenberg add-ons with the tabs component. It's not quite as flexible as we need, but we can just use some CSS to style this out. Or if you wanted to start coding, you could show hide a little bit. Yeah, the tabs I think is probably the better approach. Because does the client just click on the tab to edit the content? Yeah, yeah, they do. I think the tabs is, is definitely the right way to go. I agree. It makes it so easy. They just go to the group classes page and they just click the tab they want to change. Okay, so just because just I want to make sure that this works properly, if we... If you give me some time later, I could write some JavaScript to make it dynamic and use data attributes so it's scalable. I mean, that would be amazing. Uh, in that approach, you, what are you thinking with that approach, Taylor? Like, would we use tabs? Oh, no, no, okay, I see. Tabs is more e is easier. I, I think the tabs approach is probably the way to go just because of the time crunch, the ease of use for the client, and then also just making something that's not really reliant on some some super custom code. Uh, but it's not a bad idea, for sure.
Yeah, I agree. So, because we definitely don't have icons for every class. So let's say the, the icon goes away. What, are the, what, what options do I have for the tab title here? Is this fully custom? How do you add a new tab? See if you can drop a generate blocks container in the tab title. Doesn't seem like it. If I select this text, can I I can change it. If I type the slash, yeah, it doesn't doesn't work that way. This is um I can definitely put what I need in here, of course. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. All things puppy training, and then this is the H3. Okay, so. I mean, this would be easy, because this is just text. Without this image, all this stuff is just text. And then it looks like there's some styling controls for the text there. And so I can do this, and then tab title. It's kind of annoying. It looks like it has its own font. Font family inherit. Oh, that's super whack. Hmm. That's really bummer, Kyle. I don't like that at all. Maybe, maybe you're right, Taylor. Maybe the, the approach here is to go with the custom route because we get the flexibility that we need and I don't have to sit here and try to reinvent the wheel. Because, I mean, really all this is going to be if we go that route is just a simple grid, 50-50 situation, then another grid inside here. And then... Yeah. I think I'm going to build out the panels... And then we'll worry about the custom code later. That seems like the right approach in this case. Thank you so much, Kyle. I appreciate your help as always. <clears throat> and I'll see you soon. And yell at my screen. <laughs> okay, so in this case... So when it's active, it's going to be the frolly background color. So I'm actually not going to set the background color. I'm going to add a headline. And then this is going to be <clears throat> H3, like I said. Beginner basic training. Beginner basics training. That font size is a lot smaller. 14. We all know 14 is too small. <clears throat> I'll just comply for now, and then we're going to add in another headline, and then what is this one going to be? Oh, just a paragraph. Okay, and then are those centered? They are, interesting. This must have been designed before the uh, conference we all went to. Oh, I forgot. I gotta. Can I just select all this text and then center? Yeah, okay, you can. All right. So I actually think I wanna try a class here. So if I add my own custom class, let's just call this like group divs or something. What I had a problem with before was it was applying the class in a weird spot where like it put it on an outside container.
Yeah, see right there, group divs. Because what I wanted to do is add the styling to that class. But then you have GB inside container. So I guess you could go dot group divs dot GB inside container. Or I could just duplicate it. Yeah. Let's make this easy. So what's our padding situation here? 16 all the way around. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Excuse me. 16. And then we're going to go over here. We're going to need another container. This one is going to have a headline. This is going to say all things puppy training. Oh, that's the H3. I think I got the global styles wrong. What is this one? H6. Interesting. I don't have a global style for an H6, so we'll come back to that. Oh, also, do I need to change these tag names as well? I guess I do. Interesting. So this is just Red Hat size 18 font. So paragraph and then size 18 and then slash headline. We just got some text blocks here. I think, I don't think I can copy. Yeah, I can't copy all those, but if I change this to a paragraph, I should just be able to paste in this all together. So then I'll just do that. Don't really need the fancy one since it's just body text. And then available classes, is this the same? That one's my H5. I do believe I have that. Global styles, H5, I sure do. And then what would I do for these? Yeah, that seems easy enough. Sorry, I was just thinking about how long we've been going. Three hours. <laughs> Kyle was right. I didn't really notice until we pointed that out. So container. Uh, effects, box shadow on, and then... Oh, it's the same box shadow from before. Zero, eight, oh, eight, eight, zero. And then our color is black and an opacity of 0 0.08. And then it's just some text. Background is this green. Oh, no, it's not. The text is that green, not the background. Text, green, that is centered as well. And then what's our padding situation here? Not much. Eight top and bottom. Eight top, eight bottom. So then I will just simply duplicate this contain. Oh, no. Duplicate is control shift D. That's what I did. Okay. And then uh, something else is different about that. Uh, oh, font weight, 500. I suspect letter spacing too. Uh, oh, and then vertical alignment. Uh, 
Probably because there's margin bottom on this headline, of course. There it is. Okay. And then we need some margin beneath those. 24. 24 pixels of margin. And then what comes after that? So group classes FAQ. We might need the FAQ component. That's a little tricky. Now that I'm getting this far into it, I'm like, gosh, we're gonna need all of this for each of these blocks and it will be kind of hard in the back end because I'm assuming if you add the two containers into a grid element. Ah, yeah, yeah, good call. Okay, so we'll just duplicate that. <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit tired, so I'm forgetting to talk. Yeah, Taylor, that's what I was just thinking, is it would be a little difficult. Ah, oh, shit, did I lose my drop shadow? Oh, that's weird. <clears throat> Moving it, I lost it. Maybe I did something wrong there. Yeah, not sure. Okay. Grid, vertical gap, uh, what was it? I forgot. 24. And then my container, I lost its padding. And then there's border radius, surely. Yep, four. Can I copy the styles? I'll just duplicate and then steal the text. All right, there we go. Yeah, if the JavaScript runs in the editor, that'll be perfect. Oh, I'm an idiot. I, the containers and the grid and stuff was in a different spot, so that's why the things look a little bit wonky. The two squares on the hover of the element where the bold icon is. Oh, really? Oh, wow, there is a copy styles. Good call. Okay, I'm gonna just publish this real quick. Yeah, so the question is, if it runs in the back end as well, then that'll work. That is the question. So I'll just go ahead and leave that because the only other bit is the FAQ and I suspect we can use the UAG plugin for FAQ. Sure, yeah, one second. Oh wait, I have to give you like the tunnel, right? Because I'm developing on local. <laughs> Oh, this could be a tab. So I'll just leave the tab open. Oh, I gotta log into local, that's funny. <clears throat> so who are the absolute legends that are still here all the way through this stream three hours later? Let me, let me see you in chat.
I think my uh, brain is like shutting down. I'm struggling to continue adding valuable commentary. <laughs> We've done a lot though. This has been really, really awesome. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? I think this might be where I call it because we don't have a solution for this. I need to think about what direction we need to go. But let's see what else there is on this. So we have, oh, we have another page with the same functionality too. Dang. Oh, Taylor, you're a legend. I know you're here. We also have the meet our team thing, which is another tab situation. Contact us page is not going to be difficult at all because we're just going to harness gravity forms. We got a training resources section, which is going to be interesting because that is a protected content area. And then we have a questionnaire form, which is just going to be a custom gravity form. Um, I think that's it. So there's definitely some big hurdles. Uh, can you convert Figma to Gutenberg? I am working on my app to do so. Not currently, but that is something that I am trying to achieve right now. So it's not ready yet, but hopefully in the future. So um, I think that's where I'm going to call the stream, everybody. I really appreciate you watching. We did a lot today. We talked about a lot. We covered a lot. I'm super excited to continue doing this kind of thing. Um, let me know in the comments of the video, message me, Facebook me, whatever, and let me know what you think. Uh, I'm going to switch back to the face cam real quick. We need to, um, I want to, I want to know what you feel is, uh, the time you'd like me to, to spend, you know, moving forward, what kind of content you want to see. Would love to get your feedback on that. Definitely going to be doing more Gutenberg stuff. There's all kinds of other things that we can cover. So let me know your thoughts. Really appreciate every single one of you. And I think that's going to close it out. Thanks, everybody. Hope you all have a great day. Thanks for all you legends that hung out until the end. See you next time. Bye.